Guys, I'm bringing in a long intro to let everybody come in. <laughs> and uh, as 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 we know from the header, this might be a long one or an intense one, I would say. Either way, it's going to be great. So while we let people come in. Oh, can you hear that, guys? No, no, oh, kind of. Oh, this needs to be on. So, yes, come in. Hi, welcome, everybody. This is going to pop in. Here we go. Hi, Diana B. Hi, Laura Font. Hi, Amy Jones. Yes, Miranda. Uh, we got a good episode today here, guys. Episode 17. Uh, okay, yes, first, second. Yay! Hi, Free Xenu Project. Drive safe. Listen, but drive safe. Hi, 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 Jim. Yes, Becca's. Casey Isaac. Whoop, whoop. All right. What you never got to share. Because I care. I care, I care. I care. Wow. SP Cracker Liquor Fan. What's up? And I'm feeling kind of sad Can't get it off me They made me feel so bad You know, I'm feeling unsettled And I'm feeling kind of sad Yeah, can't get it off me They made me feel so bad They made me feel so bad All right, that's good enough, guys. <laughs> Welcome to episode 15. Oh, sorry, episode 17 of Lara FM TV, also known as SPTV, because we are proud motherfucking SPs, baby. Hi, welcome, everybody. Thank you all for being here and watching. Um, and keeping up if you've been keeping up because I know a lot of you have been and asking me important questions on episodes that I have totally forgot to answer questions or <laughs> people are like, so Laura did this whole episode and gave us a lot of information about so many things but forgot to answer these big three questions <laughs> or whatever. Anyway, so I'm glad we're catching up. You guys are helping me catch up. <laughs> and at the same time, as you all know, putting my phone on silent, um, this is also very therapeutic for me, guys. This is very therapeutic, uh, not only for me, but for a lot of us cadets, uh, a lot of us kids, children, um, fellow adults that were raised in the planet, literally the own their own world and planet of Scientology and the Sea Org. Um, so... So going, like even being able, yeah, I have, you know, I'm a little rocker girl and I, it took me a minute to realize like I had to build up my, you know, my strength in my, uh, in, in giving myself trust and strength and, and feeling okay to be wrong and, and to learn and to love. And, um, because I was always shut down and controlled. And as part of that, um, doing these YouTubes and talking about this with everybody here and getting questions and all the feedback and 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 getting and most of it is literally just giving love like a lot of people are just sending more and more love which actually let like it feel it's filling up this hole this avoiding hole of of neglect of these children and all of us that we never got and we don't we can you know part of criticizing or saying oh yeah we were you know neglected as children or it's not that big of a deal it's a huge deal when you really go down the psychology of of uh, things that slowly as you're as you're being raised in life and learning basic rules and things like this you start to realize the tiny little things that were happening to us as children and to 
people born and raised in the Sea Org or in Scientology or by celebrity parents of the Sea Org or whatever in any way, um, it's always being controlled and completely manipulating. So uh, not only manipulating and controlling, but like abusively, like individually, there are parts of your life growing up through your teen years, through your, you know, eight-year-old, nine-year-old. These are huge like landmarks for your for yourself by yourself when you're alone in the future like and a lot of this is stolen actually i would say 100 percent of it is stolen and we are trying to still find pockets of what is real what is what wasn't who was really evil who wasn't uh what was you know what you there's so many questions and and it and i think to be able to do this, as you guys know, and to be able to be on YouTube and to be able to talk about things. And then as we're talking about this, we hear other people. I have people who call me or hit me up or email me um, and ask about different cadets. And then we've had different cadets on. So this one is super important because as you've seen on the, on the title, this is Int Ranch Gold Base and Cadet Talk with Mike Brown specifically. Mike Brown, I want to pull up because if you've been watching the other channels, I've, I've, I've talked about him probably very harshly. Um, I mean, not very harshly, just didn't ever have any sort of uh, an experience where um, I didn't know of, my, of Mike Brown as anything else other than the Sea Org cadet. Uh, gold base staff member who would come to the Int Ranch and reinforce, you know, the ethics and the justice and um, and 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 yet at the same time, Mike Brown himself was also an Int Ranch cadet. And before he was a cadet, he was down in the PAC ATA LA area, the Sea Org, you know, science. So, as you've heard probably in other streams, the, he was one of the enforcers for me. This is. Uh, we're going to get into it. I want to pull him up to the stage. But uh, for me, there was many categories, which I want to talk to him about. Um, but I see Mike in many different eyes. And I, w I would like to dig into, obviously, healing for not just myself, but for all the cadets watching. Because um, I know there's a lot of you guys. And I love you. And keep reaching out. And if you haven't, reach out to me. Please do. I know you're watching, so reach out to me. You don't have to even talk. You don't have to say anything. But reach out to me because it is super important for people like Mike Brown himself, who did reach out to me through Claire and a bunch of, of people through the SBTV community. Um, this is the stuff that is helping us open up and learn and figure out what went, what went down, what went wrong, um, and just to hear it from the you know the horse's mouth i should say i don't have any good analogies for that one but um let's ha have mike brown here thank you guys all for being here and uh here you are hi mike <laughs> hey laura how are you doing what, what's good. funny is uh calling you laura now because um, <laughs> i remember in in our in my teens and uh the time that i was uh in the sea org i always knew you as megan mm-hmm and uh, I remember, uh, I think it was talking to either uh, Val or Roanne. I asked a question about, at one point, this was a couple of years ago, about the Ant Ranch and kind of the timeline that it was uh, dissolved. And they said, oh, I'll have to ask Laura. And I was like, who are they talking about? I'm like, who was Laura? Who was Laura? I'm trying to put in my mind who you were. And then somebody said, oh, you know, were Laura. Were they kind Anderson. of being casual about it? Like, oh, we'll ask Laura. Well, no, it was just. I'll ask Laura. Well, yeah, like, hey, I'll ask Laura, like, you know, because they know you, they knew you as Megan then, but they know you more recently as Laura, and, you know, as someone that they know now as a person and, you know, in their, uh, who they see. So mm -hmm. you're Laura. And I was like, mm -hmm. who are they talking about? And then I'm like, who, who, which Laura? And they're like, Laura Anderson. Oh, Megan. I'm like, oh, you mean Megan Anderson? And I'm like, and they're like, yeah, yeah, she goes by Laura. And I'm like, the things you don't know about people, uh, just like literally, our names. So that was just a funny thing um, right from the beginning, but it's, uh, Meaning you know, and then you watch... didn't, you didn't know me at all. He didn't even know that even my middle name was Lara because we didn't even know ourselves that much. That's like, like yeah, we so... can get into that little bit of not uh, having our social security 
numbers or anything. And so there was never for me to look at a birth certificate. I literally saw my name, Laura M. Anderson, on my birth certificate. And the cert- like when we went at six or seven years old to in the bus to go get finally go get our social security numbers. Anyways, whatever. Yeah. So it's so strange. So my well, real first for, name is Lara and Megan. Yeah, Lara was what I was definitely name. grow grew up as or growing up in the Sea Oregon Scientology. Megan was was my whole life. Right. In, yeah. In, and in Scientology. And what was uh, so interesting about that is like I remember when I got out and and then it was when I was 27 years old and we're going to probably jump around a whole lot. But yeah, I remember trying to say, like, how am I going to fit myself into the new life? I had, I had even at one point thought, like, should I go by my middle name? But my middle name's a little weird. So I didn't decide to do that. But I but I, that thought had crossed my um, my mind, just like trying to reinvent yourself when you leave and get your life going on the track that you wanted to. Did you way think later that, than it should have. Did you think that when you were going, because I've been watching a bunch of your videos and every time you go live with anybody in the SBTV, I'm always watching. Um, but for many reasons, and y'all in the chat will find out <laughs> a lot of that very soon. But um, fuck, what was I just saying? What were you just saying? Oh, you're, you were saying about names when we got out. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you. So I know that you joined the military. So was that during mm-hmm. like I know they also fill out a lot of I was married at 19 to a military uh, Air Force man. So um, I know that they make you even if you're with somebody like who you're they make you fill out constantly any other names you might have used or whatever. Um, yeah, so as you get enrolled was it around in the that time? systems. It was it was just a, it was a fleeting thought that kind of went through my head before I enlisted. But it was when around that time of like, well, now I, I need to make new friends. I'm going to kind of reinvent myself in my life. Should I go more by my middle name than my first What's name? And middle my middle name? name it's Robin, like Robin Williams. Oh, okay. But it's so strange. They're like, isn't that a girl's name? And you're like, I'm not going to call myself Robin. I mean, this is just going to be nothing but conversations constantly that I don't want to have. So I'm like, Batman I'll just stick with and Robin. <laughs> Especially no, Robin like, Brown. Robin Brown. Well, that's my father's name is Robin Brown. Oh, see. So that's why that's been, my middle name. It's probably why they he, took you away. But from he goes him. by Rob and then th- people think that's Robert. Anyway, it's. I was like, I, I was going to say, really maybe you can use Michael, like if you used Michael Brown, I don't think that would have been obvious to me because Mike Brown well, was definitely you. Well, I, that is like everyone on all my paperwork and everything. It's all Michael Brown, but then all my friends are just Mike Brown. Um, yeah, yeah. So my oh, identity is kind of, but if you look up Mike Brown, there's a million Mike Browns on the internet. There's like, it's, it's like as common as like the Honda uh, Civic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's not I really mean, unique. Like Lara Anderson also seems to be also a very common name, but actually mm-hmm. for some reason Lara and Anderson are are um uh, whatever. I'm sure it's a very yeah. common name and it's probably why I don't give a crap about lore people I do Say when Laura. it comes to YouTube, I'm like there's no you in me, okay? It's yeah. Lara. Lara FM. No Laura. They're like, oh, that's why the algorithm. So the algorithm literally told me, why don't you hashtag in your videos? I haven't done any hashtags, guys. I'm work I'm gonna work on it. I'm doing so much stuff right now, healing and dealing and working and and taking care of my furry animals. Um I'm gonna be very professional. Once I have professional people, <laughs> help me redo you, it because I'm not gonna do it myself. <laughs> Well, I'm going to um, be the best. But, yeah, there you go. But um, I think we were kind of getting to the point of like where uh, kind of where we were in, in terms of like my my age bracket or my contemporaries with respect to where your uh, your yeah. age bracket. And I think that part of this and, and you know, I, I do have some uh, both some explaining and then also some things to um, apologize for. But at the same time. I think that it's important for us to talk about that. So we're framing the situation that we found ourselves in, not as a means for me to justify the um, things, but I just want people to understand it. But um, I was closer. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to Mm -hmm. let hear other people hear you say, first of all, about the Laura Megan thing, because that clears things up for people who are just like, like, what is this fucking thing? Yeah, yeah. Why? (laughs) And then even at shows. I have people who still call me Megs or Megan today and yeah. I don't give, they're my homies for life, like literally. So 
I, it doesn't, I love it. It's so endearing, especially at like a live show. Anyway, so it was very interesting. I, I did go through, it just one day, it was like an epiphany for me. I was like on tour with my first band, Little Red Radio, and my drummer was like, making fun of me like Laura her real name's Laura because my they wouldn't give me the wristband because of Megan Anderson and I just show I'm Laura why are they calling you Megan your own band yeah. members I was like oh my god anyways um so then I was like fine I'm starting to use Laura 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 uh but that also made me feel better about my new path like as a singer mm -hmm. or whatever I was doing um so I wondered had did that help you get through the military or no, or, well, or was it just like oh you didn't need to really change your name for anything i didn't i didn't need to change my name for it now i have a super common name but i think similar to that but different we never were given like a normal thing now that i have kids a thing that i relate is like i ask them and i actually am interested and, and like hey what do you want to do when you grow up we were never asked that question. Yeah. Like it was decided for us. That's so for, literally on for, my note, it was like, yeah, like ask kids, what are things that like, what is Mike Brown? It's it also, we're going to be talking about this guys, because I want to hear Mike, Mike's healing and processing, because that will also help me and other people like really accept like, oh, okay, this is coming from somebody. And this is why I have you on the channel. Honestly, on my channel, I was like, when I when we spoke and and just a few certain other things, I was like, I can hear that this man has healed in some way, whether it's through his own children and having his family or his own career in the military or whatever it is. It's not the Mike Brown that um, very like loyally was like really rough and and horrible at times. And then there were times where I would see that Mike Brown sweet smile when like, oh, okay, everybody's working. You're allowed, you know, you can, have, I don't know. I, anyways, yeah, we'll, we can go there, but. Um, yeah, and, and uh, there's a lot to unpack with that, but I think it's important that we do. And part of it, um, so our age uh, differences. So for me, just uh, to kind of tie in, on, uh, tie up the, the point of, you know, for you going out and do, uh, following your passion, doing music, uh, and then also aligning your name with that was a fresh start is what I understand that as. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, this is a thing that I want to do and I'm going to go out and do it myself. And this is a thing that I've created. It's something that I've defined for myself. It's my own path. If it's a hard path, it's the one I chose. And no one gets no one gets a say in that other than me. And I that uh, my military service was the similar thing for me because that's what I wanted to do. Um, when I was 15 years old, which is probably before a lot of the memories you have of me later, um, was, yeah. uh, when I was a cadet, see where I think, um, you were born Well, I was born in 76. I think we're about 10, 10 years apart. apart right? Yeah. 86. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm eight, nine, I'm February 12th, 1986. And I'm April 14th, 76. Yeah. So, so with that, us 10 years apart, now that I see and have children, um, when you're a kid, like in a normal world or even just in our abnormal world, a year or two difference in age is a big is a large amount, you know, like between um, when you're elementary school age, which we never went to school. So but I'm just giving a comparison versus when you're kind of like middle school and you're trying to like, you know, like weird shit's happening, like you're having, you know, going through puberty or then when you're at high school age, like there's a massive difference. You're like transitioning your interests, the way you react to things. Um, and then for older kids and younger kids to be kind of smashed in together. Yeah. I there's was about a lot to wrong say with that. that. Okay. I was about to say that because especially it's not like you're free smashed in with, in the outside world with a bunch of people. You're on no, no. a secluded private environment where elderly women and men will dress naked in front of you or dr undress at any time. And you just have to keep your TRs in. And, and if you feel weird, that means you have some weird grossness that you'll handle through Scientology auditing someday. So there's a very, very awkward line of elderly women and elderly boys being able to do things to younger, like 10 years apart, younger children. And they themselves were children at this age at one point. Um, are you and, meaning like older in age, like in their late teens? Or are you meaning like older men and women, like the staff? 
Uh, no, this I'm talking about specifically the cadets who are a little bit older, like 17 compared okay. to a nine year old is a huge yeah, yeah. difference. Like it is. And, and so when a 17 yeah, year old is flirting though. with you or is doing inappropriate things, when there's no reflection to look at because there's no yeah. outside world. Like, I don't know this man is, am I being just immature and child and childish when I should just be an adult? And, uh, you know, I don't know, it, you know, so yeah, I jumped yeah, in on I you think... right there because that was one of my biggest, like, here's something that people have to wrap their head around. A secluded environment with all age of all people doing all kinds of things in front of all kinds of ages of people is so fucking yeah, like, inappropriate. Well, one thing that I saw from... Um, and that allows... Sorry, I'm jumping yeah. in again. It allows mm -hmm. the normality of the abuse and the... and on physical, whether it was work abuse or molestation or um, rape or uh, a quote unquote out duty with other cadets who was only found out because they didn't want, you know, like, oh, we don't want them to get pregnant. So they need to anyways, all underage because Mike, the only reason people were at the Int Ranch base as children or cadets or pre Sea Org members was because they were under the age of 18 and they had not finished their schooling. If the legal schooling, they didn't give a fuck about educating people. So they allowed whoever, like, that's why Nathan Tompkins later was allowed to be an adult earlier because he was kind of smart and got through all of his GED and stuff. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, Anyways, sorry, that, we're jumping ahead, true. but so, yeah. So what you have is, um, this is kind of because I've had to give a lot of thought to this and kind of try to unpack the situation that we found ourselves in. So initially, I think the ranch was created for a good reason, um, but because it was created and in the realm of I Scientology- I want to stop you because the ranch was created for a good reason because there was a bad thing happening because of Scientology's neglect to children. So Biddy- Create. Yeah, yeah, created this correct. ranch, but it was never a good, it was a good thing from the hell hole that these babies, I'm reading old policy letters of programs that were fixing the ATA and the PAC base in the years that you were a kid, like seven or eight, I guess. Down there. And it, yeah. they, these are reports and handlings of what was going down and, and how Dr. Megan Shields had, like had told ba babies, infants many times uh, oh, nope, I told you to, you gave them the wrong milk. Send them to the hospital just like because they got to Megan Shields too late. It's just so fucking insane. I mean, I could show you some of these things, but I'm also thinking about you and 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 I'm thinking about multiple, not just you, but multiple people. Um, I'm even thinking at this point like Casavius Tabioyan because he was a major abuser, like physical spanking fucking... And then at the same time had a side to him where when the kid, the ch cadets were listening to him and, you know, were getting projects done uh, correctly and on time and stuff, he also became a very fun, almost like older adult figure, like a f fucked up father. Yeah. It's so fucked up. I can't even believe so, I'm saying that. Yeah. And um, so there's a lot of the ranch was created because, you know, all of the. And I think that this applied to plus or minus a little bit. We're talking about 80, 80 children, yeah. um, maybe a little bit more than that, but that's just over a round the, number. Over of, the 11, 12 years. Yeah, the, but in terms of um, staff members that were um, posted at the Golden Era Productions property in um, Riverside County, Hemet San Jacinto area, or the Int Base, whose parents were working up there, but their children were an, a two-hour drive away in... LA. So the way that then worked for us is when we were in LA, we were just living with other families, like randomly, like, Hey, sleep in their living room or something. And that's where we would stay. And then you're supposed to then go to the ATA, which was the Apollo training Academy. It was the little cadet organ pack. Or if you're under a certain age, which is probably the, uh, where you and probably your sister Colleen were, you were probably over in the CEO, which was over by the, uh, by celebrity center, the manor, right? Yeah. I, I, and I think, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and then your your brother Jared was. The, I remember going oh, go to ahead. the Shanger Lodge. Do you? That was like I a think, cross. 
so that's where I think the actual um, like living quarters were. But during the day, the daycare thing yeah, was in that right. Cadet Estates org, the CEO. Mm -hmm. yep. And that was and now I think they bulldozed it and turned that into like a parking structure or something uh, for Celebrity mm -hmm. Center. But that used to be this like this crappy playground area and just a bunch of big rooms with cots where the kids would sleep and everyone yeah. would eat in there. I and was it was in Vivian Jenner's class. And I that was yeah. one of my earlier memories was seeing me seeing other kids that were older than me that I guess had some pee problem. I thought it was mm -hmm. a pee problem because I'm sure I heard that from an adult as a young yeah. three year old, four year old child. Not like, yeah, I was only there. Yeah, I was like two and a half, three years old, seeing all the other peas on the other cots and being like, oh, maybe I could help them clean it since I'm not a peer. Like, I don't know. Right. Yeah. But that was and remember how many uh, how many kids at the ranch um, did have a problem with that. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, they would, like every day there would be everyone would, you would it have would to take your mattress thing. outside. Who peed? Yeah, who peed? And then you take the mattress outside and there would be like 20, 30 mattresses <laughs> just lined up along the motels along that side of the building, like airing yeah. out in the, in the and then we'd spray California them with the, sun. And we would spray them with the fire hose because they had a lot of pressure. And then it we and then, then we just dry let them out. air out. Right. And we do the bleach. We again, a chem, a, using constant chemicals all the time with with no yeah. gloves or anything, just well, thinking from early age that this was the norm. This is how you- It's probably not that. unusual that, that kids have issues wetting the bed and that's the thing kids work through. But sometimes, and I'll have to ask my cousin, I have a cousin, Jen, who sh she's actually a therapist. And yeah. I'll have to ask her, like, if there's a high instance and this is like, you know, is there an average on like what percentage of kids up to what age? Because there were kids that were like nine, I've 10, actually, 11 years old that still has, had that. My therapist has told me about this and there's very much connection with trauma and abuse connected with people. They and call abandonment. Bed, bedwetters. Yep. Neglect, yeah. abandonment. And um, yeah. And uh, or I remember a child not a... feeling like they're able to tell their parents like if What's how they, on? who they are, like how they are, what they feel or like they're like, yeah, they feel. They like, kind of regress back and they're not progressing past that point of. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. so. So when we were in LA, it wasn't great. Um, and then you're kind of, you're down there without your parents. You're sort of like free range in LA and the Hollywood area. It's not great neighborhoods around there. And there was the Scientology complex area, but outside of that wasn't real safe. So the idea was like, hey, get all these kids up here and we're going to um, make this ranch. And the kids at first were literally eight of us. And it was four boys and four girls. We were around 12, 13 years old. Now looking back, like I have a picture in my mind about, oh, I was so grown up at the time. And those, some of those pictures I sent you yesterday, I'm like, I was a, like, I was a little, I was a little shit kid at this point. Um, but we were chosen because we were older than the average kids that would ultimately come up to that ranch because they were going to use us to do renovations. Um, so initially for the first year or so all we did was construction work and we weren't really having any other education and ultimately any education i would say at the ranch was so subpar from what the society demands or what a normal education should, should be versus what we got is shameful but um after a while once we had enough of the renovations done and i think some of the first kids to come up were like benjamin render um, Jenna and th that were younger. Uh, but before that, it was like myself, Justin, later Sterling came up and later Mike Norton came up. But they were a little bit like my same age. Um, but uh, I think we had Danny Hill and we had Mark Berther. I don't know if you remember them. Yep. yep. Uh, they were, we were all about the same age, but we were old enough where we could be competently made to do construction work. Right. And for us leaving Los Angeles and coming up and doing that, we still had things in our day, which we this lasted for a couple months. It's like you have two hours of free time and we're like, just to do whatever we wanted. That didn't last for very long. As soon as, as soon as it started turning into like, Hey, we need to organize this up. Then of course, Scientology creeps in on it. But to your point, and they even though, changed that, they changed that heading free time to CSP because free time sounded really bad to when but, child services did come to inspect or something they did change it because it was bad pr to the outside world if we say free well time. that's what's so strange because um children need free time like big like they just need creative free time to do whatever the hell they want to do like hey do there should be you know a, a normal like for for my for my kids they go to school they do their homework you know it's like you know hey please pick up your room which is a 
not going to happen. Um, but, um, <laughs> kids are messy, you know, like, and I'm like almost like OCD because of the way we were raised. Um, my wife is like, you need to chill out about this. They're just going to be a mess and they will, but, but they need time to just like do nothing other than just whatever they want to play and to have be silly and to learn and to color and like all these things that is them figuring out the things that they're good at and what they like and finding things that they might be interested in. And then as a parent, I try to now nurture those things and re looking at the way life was structured for us versus the way I'm now trying to provide, um, opportunities. It was craziness. Um, so then as, as the ranch goes on, what turn what initially was a very, um, positive idea in terms of what to do with it. Well, all the only real thing was we were brought up there and kind of put to work. And we had a few adults that were assigned to us to like, Hey, you're going to be in charge of their education, which did, it's going to be science. Did, did you not get the thing? Um, like when you were going to the ranch, did you not feel, did you not get the same orders or mission approval as we did that like you were being told you're going to the Hint ranch it's a great oh place. we very much did yeah uh, oh for us, we and were, then when we so, got there they said okay well it's not as great uh but these are older cadets are going to show you how we're going to make it great but they did lie straight up lie swear to god as a child i remember thinking oh my god we're going to a place with animals and and I can't imagine, like, I remember Vivian teaching me, like, animal pictures. And I remember thinking yeah. those animals are going to be there. And anyway, so, yeah. Well, see, some of those things existed. Like, we had horses for a while. Like, remember, we had those big, um, were they Morgan? Giraffe horses. horses. Giraffe horses. Yeah, Loretta and They're Jackie. Like, Loretta and Jackie. Yeah, they were, they were these big, they almost looked like Clydesdales, but without the hairy feet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're called they're called giraffe Morgans. horses, but they're called some yeah they're called like I think we called them draft horses, uh, but they're called draft some, yeah. But yeah, I remember doing a horse research project. They finally let me, and I found oh, yeah. out all about that. And we had them in a wooden fence, and then they eat the fence, and then we're spraying stuff yep. on the fence. So they don't anyway. There was all sorts of stuff with that. So, um, what as we ended up you know doing this construction, doing this work. But when we came up there initially, there was a ranch mission and the mission um, in charge. So the whole thing was instigated by um, Jenna's mom, Betty, which is like, I want my kids out of L.A. We're going to do this. And she had enough pull at the time to say, we're going to do this project and we're going to make this ranch for the kids. Great idea. But think about it like uh, Biddy, Janice, um, Gillum, Grady. The people that were kind of in charge of that, they are second generation Scientologists. They grew up on the Apollo. They didn't get a proper education. They are just go getters and they're able to make things happen in the Sea Org. But their concept of like what should school exist and uh, like and how should it um, be structured, it wasn't any different than probably what we had. What we had was probably lax compared to what they had on the Apollo. So just thinking like the people in charge of it, it wasn't like, hey, we have the school curriculum and we're going to make these kids educated. None of that was ever going to happen. Yeah. Um, and also and if because you, if the, for those listening, if you go back and watch the episode, I did talk to Janice about this. She mm -hmm. you can hear that she's actually explaining L. Ron Hubbard was enforcing this on her and on everybody like um, anyways, well, I'll, I'm going to, I'll be going back with Janice on episodes, but there to like, to hear you process the way you did and to hear Rosemary's story, which we'll get to, um, and to hear about, and to know Jenna and to be talking, you know, like just hearing everybody's story through the SVTV, a full circle made me understand Wow, Mike Brown also had reading these policy. I would go look at the dates. I would be like, oh, what date was this thing happening? And it was like 88 or 89. And I was now thinking, oh, so this is when, you know, the bigger kids, the bigger adults, like, you know, adults, uh, Mike Brown, Justin, Miscavige, Sterling, Tompkins, mm -hmm. you know, not Nathan. He was younger. But like this is when I was like, oh, Danny Hill, Mark Berther, all these people, th those this is the year when they started to realize, oh, we need to handle these babies. And these are the baby. You guys were the babies. So so us as adults and then sometimes we were even called adults. So sometimes you'll mention that like, hey, these older kids are these adults. Yeah, because Sorry. they had a classification of us. Too. Yeah. No, that's OK. But it's important that because you know how Scientology is good at taking normal words and changing them to be yep. completely and totally fucking different. Yeah. So we had these different <laughs> classifications. One of them was the word adult. 
So in the society, an adult means that it, two things. One, you're over the age of 18, which means that you can drink, but you're not really in it. Or sorry, you can't drink, but you can vote. You're not really an adult yet. Once you get to the age of 21, then you're then you're old enough where you can vote. And then but still from financial institutions are like, yeah, that person's dangerous. We're not going to let them have a loan. And if you go and like, hey, I need insurance for my car. They're like, great. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Like everyone knows that you're still at those ages, like 18 and 21. Those are when you're considered an adult. We had the the title of adult would mean like you are no longer a cadet. You're now in charge of cadets or children. You might be 14 years old. You might be 16 years old. You're still legally a kid, although a, a, an older teenager. So I think some of that wording is important too, because, you know, for the uninitiated in this, it's like, wait, so they're saying they're adults. Like how old were these people? Like, no, no, no. Uh, so us as the older kids yeah, being then put in charge of younger children. And if you think about it, there should have been like staff that were in charge of children. Children should have been separated by ages. They should have been also separated by genders. It's like, hey, we have these, like there's the boys, there's the girls. These are like the different grades. Like this is the way the society does it. We were all just kind of stuffed in there. And because they didn't have enough staff, they're like, well, we're going to have these older cadets. We'll make some of them adults and they'll work at the ranch. They might be 15, 16, 17 years old. And now we're going to make them then uh, in charge of the education or the work requirements for younger kids that are some anywhere between uh, the the youngest kid I remember. Oh, there were so many that were young. Um, how much older? Do you remember Christina? Yep, we were really good friends. Yeah. We okay. Used to so run how low all the time? Yeah. So you two were like t constant Back, rebels. Yeah. Con they would constantly being like, "Who is the opinion leader of so these Janella, two? Janella Webster's daughter. Yeah. Like yep. the, the two of you. Are Janella just like... Webster was in RTC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember um, what her position was? I keep trying I to write that um, on Claire... her, on Christina Webster's thing, but I don't know. <sighs> anyway, um, but I remember anyway. how young Christina was when we first got there. Yes. Like she she must have been like five years old and and i'm just I'm, I'm trying to just remember back she was really young maybe maybe five or six years old when my kids so me and her are the same age for sure okay so how... like i'm either a month or two older than her or she might be even two months older than me how old were you when you arrived at the ranch almost four years old get the fuck out of here no i swear that's and i i remember seeing uh matt price i remember seeing ariella coleman and I remember seeing Sterling and uh, somebody playing like hockey. They it was during it was of course or of, I'm sure when they had us come, they were like, oh, everybody just play and you know look like you're having a good so, time or well, whatever. We would have what or they would, would be call hockey um, or exercise time. time. PE yeah, it would be or exercise yeah, time. Exercise. We'd have we'd have a we'd have an hour for PE. And yeah. that would usually, and I think that that was normally like after lunch, and it, it varied in times uh, year by year, and. The, the one thing, like I like to use an analogy about why something that could have such a good initial intention uh, started to go sour after so long. It's because Scientology is like a hammer. And if you're nothing but a hammer, everything is a nail. Um, it's like if you go play golf and I don't play golf, but it's a good analogy. You know, I have all the different golf clubs and they're supposed to be for, you know, hey, if I need to make this thing go really far or if I need to do a little putt or something like that, you have all different tools for stuff. Scientology is like just the one that you smack the crap out of it all the time and it's going to go that one direction. And that's what it's like when you're working in the Sea Org. You don't you don't have a variety of options and you have these very strict policies to follow. So anyway, and, uh, and that's why I think it fails. To be that, and the idea is to be that. Well, yeah. And the idea is to be that. um you, it, you you shouldn't need the outside world at all for any reason we should be self-sufficient as this year that's why we you there by the way y'all listening you, you there is no connection from the int ranch base at all in any way shape or form to the outside world not even by a telephone like the only two telephones physical actual phones on the property were security the security booth would have a telephone and then the adult again there it goes the adult office uh mm -hmm. would have a telephone and only the adults were which could be that. younger kids uh i'm just saying they're not over 18 is what i'm saying so they could have been yeah. like nathan Tompkins was put as an adult at 16 or 17 
Um, and so, and he had the keys to the office and the code to the phone. There was a code yeah. on the phone. So you couldn't, even if we broke in, which we did, uh, to the mm. office to call my mom or whatever it was, uh, we still needed a code to the phone, which we yeah. also snuck and look at later when somebody was doing sweetly. Yeah, and, and, Anyways, and kids and are Weber smart. You'll figure all that stuff out. Yeah, kids are so smart. So imagine the things that we're trying to process at our age. I mean, I already know, like, I'm telling you, Mike, I'm... People are like, oh, well, I wonder if Meg, you know, if they're going to be able to resolve. I'm like, no, I have already done half of the healing, I think, by listening to you through all of your videos and through Rosemary's story, who we knew, like, as kids and as cadets and seeing her pick, you know, you and the kids up from the ranch during the Sunday two-hour free time allotted, you know, amount. Um, right. And and her being so sweet, I just like all of this is just fucking insane. Um, so yeah, I do. My, my I'm starting to. Great. I'm starting to see that even what happened to me in my experiences, definitely later were completely different, which we'll talk about. Um, and then even when you left, what was left, like what the standard was. For, mm -hmm. for when you left like mike brown left oh don't make a don't have us have oh do we need to bring in the mission again and it was like do we need to bring in yeah, mike and brown? i actually and and uh the way the way you remember it it's uh very interesting versus the and what you remember is is probably not inaccurate but just the circumstances which myself and a couple other older kids at one point were sent back and what I remember from that and what when, you know, and so I would love to, to kind hear of unpack that. Can that we too. just talk about that really quick? Sure, sure, sure. So, so I'm going to tell everybody an, really quick. Um, do you remember? We were, we were in an ethics group as younger things. The in ranch, we were kind of getting older. The younger kids were getting older. We were around like, what, nine, eight, nine. I was I was in the gut. Mike, I was in the governance group the whole time, basically, that I was at the Ant Ranch. It, you were. They always uh, put so, me back in there, even when I thought yeah. I wasn't even being that out ethics at the time. I was like, and oh, I'm not going to get sent. Like Somebody else is below going. child, right? Yeah, it's and like it you're less than a child. So not even the fun child policies applied to us. We got no pay. We definitely got spankings or whatever punishment the governess chose, uh, the governess I see in charge. Um, anyways, so let's get into that. Let's get into that because I want to hear it will help all of us, not just me. I'm I'm very mm -hmm. much being selfish in this interview and in this like or in this okay. in this no, I because I just want to heal. I just want to get whatever last like things I feel shitty about for myself. And I'm sure that will also make a lot of people feel better because they were with me. As you know, you do know you were there. Um, yeah. But I also also through listening to all your stuff have learned your side of it, you know. Uh, I haven't heard right. the details of like why did they choose Mike Brown to be well, like there's why? a reason why. Okay, yeah. So I want to hear that. Why did so, they choose him to to come back? You were in full uniform. Do you remember this? I I do. I mean, and I know I, you do, I, but... I remember it probably. It was over the course of maybe that I was out there for probably two or three days, um, and then it was off and on, and then I got of course, put onto something else, but let me kind of explain. Yeah. So, and there's, we'll come, let's come back once we talk about this and then fill in the blanks from, um, when I was from that point of, you know, kind of a young cadet doing the work to yeah. the point where I wanted to get out of there and then right. what it took for them to change my mind into it because they, uh, there's a whole, process where all of us go through to kind of become Sea Org members. But so you remember this around, you would be around nine years old of when this, uh, yeah. this time frames happen, I, right? I just remember between like eight and 10, I, it was just like, yeah, so I either let's have call to it listen nine. or I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose. So nine, uh, you're, you're, you're either nine or 10. I think when some of there was at least myself, there might've been another one or two of the uh, former cadets that were sent back for a day or two just to, I don't know, try to, you know, get everyone refocused. But at the time, I was now working at Golden Era Productions. I would have been somewhere between 18 and 20 years old, having been away from the ranch for maybe 18 months, maybe two years at this point. And I had been working then at Golden Era Productions. So when I left the ranch and went to Golden Era Productions, 
um, I was posted like assigned to the job of, do you remember Steve Willett, Sarah Willett's father? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He was originally in charge of estates, which oddly enough, and I think this is important to note, estates is in charge of all of the grounds, the construction, the reno or the renovations, uh, the electrical, the, all of the plumbing, all this sort of stuff. That's what estates handles. They're, they're in charge of like all the property management stuff for Golden Air Productions. The ranch and the children were a div, uh, a section under estates. So in, just think of that for a second. I'm going to put the kids and their organization of the ranch underneath the estates division that is concerned with construction work. Um, as opposed to like, hey, I'm going to put it under the part of the organization like qualifications that would be concerned with education for Sea Org members. Just let that sink in for a second. We were under estates. Like they were, a, that's what the ranch was. So uh, originally I was working as his organizing officer, which is basically like, um, his assistant, his, uh, deputy, uh, he was in charge of the, he was the estates, uh, division head and I was his assistant. And my job was to, uh, he gives orders. I go and make sure things are organized and making sure people are doing those orders. This is what I was brought into. Uh, that was my first post at Golden Era Productions was I'm going to work for him. Honestly, I'm going to tell you like, there's, there's nothing more I hated than to be in charge of getting people's orders done. I, I wanted a job that was literally like, um, I was envious of Sterling when he was in the fricking trees department, because all he had to do was climb around in fricking trees and cut them. Like, or when somebody would do graphic design, I just wanted to do a job that was my job. And I had was no one else's problems other than just doing my own job. And I was never finding myself in that position. So I'm, I'm a very motivated hard charging kind so of was person. Steve, Steve Willett was kind of always just pounding orders at you. Was that the, was that? So he would give orders to everyone. Like if, if there's like, Hey, like he was in charge of all the renovations We're uh, we're building the Cine castle. We're doing the renovations on whatever buildings, the studios, and he's doing all that in addition to the grounds work. So as these orders, like I'm going around making sure everything's set up and all the orders and stuff are being done. He is getting a lot of success as the estate secretary. So what do we do in Scientology anytime somebody is successful at a job? You move them out of that job and you give them a job that they know nothing about to make them to move them up into something that isn't successful so that they could ultimately fail at it. And I know I'm being a little tongue in cheek, but he went and he was a guy with a background in construction. He was doing well at construction. So there was a reorganization that was done and he was made the commanding officer of Golden Air Productions. He's the CEO Gold now. Um, and the guy had zero qualifications to be the CEO of gold. He was just like, okay, you're doing good as the, as the, the guy in charge of renovations. We're going to make you in charge of the film studio. Um, so Steve he took Willett. me, you mean Steve, Steve Willett. Willett. Okay. Yeah. He was then moved up I to the position I kind of remember that. Officer. I remembered, I remembered Steve Willett being over like a States and I remembered him being physical. I, I remember as a, as Sarah Willett's friend at the Int Ranch and also a cadet and a Sea Org member. There's no chill. There's no, like, I can't even say friend to Sarah Willett because then later she became the governess, I see, and was demanding Renee Berther spank us whenever we swore or whatever. Like, little yeah. Sarah, cute Willett. Like, how did they turn her into that? Anyways. Well, um, there's a reason why. It's because hurt people hurt people. So, and but so Sarah Willett's dad then became from estates became CO Gold, right? Does that make any sense to you? Like, I just was like, did they not have anybody also technically trained? And I was really obviously we're Scientologists at this time, so I was thinking, do they not have a technical also? Like I was just like, this guy just knows how to physically. I was like, Gold is all about he's a I thought e meters manager. and technology and mm -hmm. films and videos and yeah, audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what shit. the mm -hmm. fuck? Yeah, that was weird. So. <clears throat> So he was put in charge of CO Gold and he decided like, hey, if I'm going to be put in this position, he's going to take me, who he now is used to working with, and I'm doing all the work for him. And he's going to move me up into this position to now be his organizing officer as the commanding officer. So he's the CO Gold and I'm then moved up to that executive position after I had been in Golden Era Productions for like maybe less, maybe a year. And now I find myself like standing next to the commanding officer in front of 450 people at Golden Era Productions and not like a year before that I was out at the ranch and wasn't even on the staff. And now I'm one of the highest ranking people in Golden Era Productions. He gives orders 
a lot of times what it would be is it would be Dave Miscavige's orders coming down to the divisions. And then the CO is supposed to be making sure it's happening, the commanding officer, which meant I'm running around making people work. I, I despised that job. I cannot tell you how much I hated doing this job It because it's like everything is always a screaming ass emergency. Everyone's always in trouble. Things aren't getting done. It's just this, it's like this hamster wheel, like a self-licking ice cream cone. It never goes away. It's like, anyway, it's like Groundhog Day that just keeps going and going. I wouldn't sleep much. It was, I didn't like it. So what I remember from at the time, and a lot of time has passed since then, there was some sort of abuse or there was a kid that had been inappropriately touching other kids out there. I think you might know who I'm talking about, but that was found out about. And then uh, I think somebody from um, the ethics there were multiple, section. Mike Brown, there were multiple people, just so you know. You can just call me Mike. It's okay. You don't have to Mr. call me Mike. Mr. Brown, Mr. Mike Brown. <laughs> Sir, Mr. I, I'm not trying to interrupt you, Mr. Mike Brown, sir. Um, no, there were multiple people doing it. And 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 this is what's shitty. Like, I, mm -hmm. my channel, I want people that feel like, oh, my God, I was that person. I was molesting them. Okay, you know what? I'm not saying okay. What I'm saying is come talk to us about it. Come, come explain your mind pro your frame of mind come ex you know what i mean like i think that's a big ask for some for some people that might why? be a big ask for it's why? well so and i'll i'll give you my opinion on it okay. um and why i think it's kind of like you are um you've decided that like for you sharing in this um capacity there's probably something that is um is healing about it it's therapeutic you're also a very extroverted person who you like being like you're okay to put yourself on the stage and be able to use yourself as a mouthpiece to get a message out okay there are some people that that is really hard for them and i think that it's it's going to be an individual decision and i hope that that is true but i think that the only way we're going to see that happen is that people will come up with uh and do i feel brave enough to do that and it's probably going to start with very private conversations and you may or may not get success on having people want to speak because I know for me doing this, it was like, man, this is, you're really like putting yourself out there to do this and I'm willing to do it. And I think it's important, but I don't know. I don't think it's for everybody. Um, I wish it were, but this is also something that is probably, um, it's a uniqueness to a lot of people. And I, I think the more people are seeing, hey, this is a safe way that I can do this. It's helping other people do it. You're going to see more people increase, but I don't know that the percentage is going to be super high on people on either sides of these, you know, bad situations that are going to feel comfortable with doing it publicly. Do, do you, do you, do you agree with that? Or, I mean, you, I'm, well, I hope it would be different, but I think it might be hard for some. I don't give a fuck. That's what I say, Mike. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if it's hard for them. Like, I don't care. We don't care. We don't care if it's uncomfortable. We don't care. Like, there's ways that you don't have to be on YouTube talking about it. But there's ways to mm -hmm. heal. There's ways to heal people that says, can I call you? Am I allowed to send you a message? Am I allowed to email you just my perspective? Right. I don't give a but fuck. That's what it's I not think. our job. I think there's going to be options. It's not our there. job. Okay. But like, like for the person who is, for the, for the child in me, I'm crying for the child mm -hmm. in me. No, go ahead. For her to be like, oh, I'm so sorry you're uncomfortable to be on YouTube and talk about this. It's not about YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's ways you can email somebody or message them. And say, oh, hey, I 100% agree with that. I've been watching your videos. I know exactly what you're talking about. I want to take full responsibility. I don't know how to do it. Through all of this, we've obviously seen like, okay, we we were, this whole thing is about planet Scientology. We didn't have yeah. justice. We didn't have our own parents to go to, Mike. Yeah. Your kids, you're not wrong. like, so like, it's not our job now to be like, okay, like I feel great that you're here. I really do. Like, well, obviously, all this is coming out, but like, I don't feel that anybody that I've had horrible interactions with shouldn't feel okay to talk to me. You should feel what the consequences are. 
If it's making you feel uncomfortable or shitty or gross, then good. Deal with it. I don't give a fuck. What what I do give a fuck about is people who come and they take responsibility. They learn their psychology, what they were put into as a kid, how they came out this way, etc. Mm-hmm. That is what's cool. You don't have to be on on live YouTube. That's not what this is about. I'm the only one who has a voice who is able to, like, as a young child, to be able to do it right now. It's very hard to do this. So fuck you. Fuck all those people who can't do it. Yeah, I, we couldn't either. True. <laughs> That's what I have to say. Sorry. Wow. Like, That's okay. Every it's time. It's good to say some of that stuff, right? You got to let yeah, it Yeah, but out. also, Mike, there's times where, like, we were never allowed to express this when we were being treated like shit. And we were you couldn't told, express it to one another. That's right? right. You couldn't even talk about it to your close cadet your friend friends or whatever. Right. Yeah. That's what this. So I don't give a fuck. And I do give a fuck a lot about people who do come out and who do email and are scared and say, I have five children now. And I this was never. I'm so gross for doing that. And th- I absolutely understand why I did that. I would feel so fucking free. That's what frees us. That's what makes this understandable and okay. So Mm -hmm. I don't care. Like, hello, we were trained freaking auditors. We were uh, we were at young ages, 13 in Florida. Serge Del Mar was a trained fucking auditor at nine years old like dealing with rapers and and people scamming the government and all kinds of shit pedophilia so like we don't care like we already have heard it all sadly yeah, I totally get that. sadly yeah, but yeah, true yeah. so if you don't want to talk that's your own problem like that really is your own healing that you have to deal with but if you have somebody like me who's saying hey i'm i'm completely empathetic i'm emotional i am angry you've seen you've seen me mike i was angry at you before you came on here you know mm-hmm. Well, so, and I can see, so you might be angry at me now, but that's why I want us. So this, what I want to do is, you know, like we can't control other people. I think that other people should come forward and we should have a forum in a way that we can have a, a space that we can all talk about this because I will, I would guarantee if you got every single one of all of the kids that were at, even the ones that are still in Scientology or in the Sea Org, if you got us like honestly all in a place and we were able to be honest about hey you know was i ever provided the normal opportunities on what to do in my life the answer is going to be that we were not 100 um, percent. and then the, that and, then and i the, agree with you everything every answer will be the same but you can't just say that for not you i'm saying we as as the world and people listening we can't just be like okay well we also understand their side they need to do physical things that will allow us to understand that they really do care and do see it otherwise they're going to continue to do that behavior even in their own goodwill to their own family without knowing it that's psychology I, I hope that they I hope that everyone can get some degree of healing from this but let's try to let's go over at least what we have how about that yeah. And I do hope in the future. No, more I appreciate people can this. This is healing. I know maybe you think at this moment this is not healing. It's very healing. I'm, Sorry. I'm, I'm in the army. Um, and, and I was at gold. I'm used to people yelling at me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I just also, trying to lighten it up a little bit. No, Mike, I also have a really <laughs> strong, intense voice that I was never allowed to use my whole life either. Like, yeah, go no, figure that's why i rock out and sing so i'm not trying to yell by the way i'm just mm-hmm. very expressive well, no, and I, loving i'm very loving I'm, and open and empathetic and i'm trying to heal and i love so so fuck you fuck all y'all in your negative worlds if you're ever pointing your fingers like quiet down no it's not gonna happen i'm always gonna be I this don't know way that you're gonna quiet down so we should just talk about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm like the only way this will calm down is if we actually talk about it which we're no, doing and i think so, that, yeah and i think that that's what needs to happen uh i just i guess I'm i just I, I in wanted... terms of how many people are going to come forward uh versus I don't care. Like, like, I don't care if you come forward or not. I'm very interested in the people who are brave enough. And um, you're brave, Mike. This is uncomfortable. Thank you. And we've had uncomfortable conversations. And I've also, you are, so, okay. So what I was going to say, just to be more uncomfortable, 
um, is that when you left, so basically as we'll get to this, but like when you left after your mission of even for us as children, we felt like you guys were there for like two months, three months. So when you just said to me two to three days, that sounded crazy. I was yeah, like, what? it wasn't that very wasn't long it? and I know why it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'll explain that, but go ahead. So no, after, so, after, yeah. So you're talking after we left the ranch to go work at gold or when we came back for this, like, Hey, you guys need to get your shit together conversations. Basically they put Mike and uh, who else was on this mission with you? Because I, I, Mike Norton, I think was there. I think he might've come out for a day or two. And I think he was in security at the time, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, yep. um, or either that or CML gold. I can't remember. No, and there he were, was there were, in security. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, going back to like what was going on at the time. And again, now I'm working for Steve Willett. He is the CEO gold, but I, I'm more importantly in something I want to touch on. Um, and I don't want to get y'all riled up about this, but I do want to touch on the, the biggest omit any time on anything that was going on in terms of the thing that was never there that should have been was the involvement directly from our parents. And I love my mother. Rosemary is probably one of the sweetest people that were ever working in Scientology, but at the same time, as a parent, she you could take somebody that is that loving and make them an absentee parent. Um, they just work for the organization. And it's like, I have signed over the responsibilities of raising my children to the organization and whatever that looks like. And then you don't have the actual right people there. And it's like, hey, we're going to pawn off these responsibilities on 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 adults who are actually just older kids who don't know what they're doing and were themselves in the similar situation before. And you're going to have, um, for instance, let's take you and Christina, you guys are going to be your, your kids that needed parenting. Like if you're not listening and having problems, do you know what, like in school, it's like, Hey, if there's a kid that's like not listening and having problems with their teacher, that is the teacher sits down with the parents, the parents sort it out. And it's, you got your doggo coming over for some attention, but, at no time were our parents ever in this conversation and this going forward to the time with Steve Willett, he was the CEO gold. His daughter, Sarah was out there. And I think at this time she was in a more senior responsibility, but still probably one of the cadets, if I'm not mistaken, or in charge of like a cadet that was in charge of this governance group that you were in. Is that probably yeah, accurate? Yeah. A hundred percent. So I think like, honestly, Mike, now that you've, <laughs> you're saying this, I'm, I'm remembering that she kind of was like, not, um, tough enough and and they put her under or with Renee Berther who was very tough um, who is about my age she probably yeah, but she's Renee Mark was Mark Berther's sister mm -hmm. she and, so, so I think she's about the same age or a, so she would have been about 19 years old yeah maybe no not even so she basically um this horrible her being Renee used... not Sarah what do you mean? Yeah, Renee Berth. Renee would about. have been about 19. Mm -hmm. Right. No, she was 18. She had just turned 18. And um, okay. because she turned 18, she I have had to do a lot of healing on this human being, Renee Berther, because her and Casavius Tabioyan and Barbara Tompkins and Ann Weber, these were like the people who were, I guess, approved to spank. Like, I don't get that at all. Um, how like, uh, I certain... think it has to do with the Hubbard policies on it, but I, I, I don't even think it's worth like, yeah, that was well, the they had to be policies. considered the called like one person or job or title at that time had to be called the governess and only they could be the one that says who gets this spanked. group of kids. Right. Yeah. So at multiple times, these people were that near the end, Sarah Willett, uh, near, I would say near the end, one of my last governess group where I finally did eventually become a cadet. And then they were like, oh, good, look, she's been a cadet for almost six months without any trouble. And then they shipped us all off to Clearwater and all that. Like, Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So I was like, oh, You've good, graduated. yay. I've, I've finally <laughs> really finished the governess group program. But anyway, Sarah Willett, I don't know. I, that, I Again, somebody else I would love to talk to. Um, she, Sarah, uh, Steve Willett's daughter, Sarah Willett was made to be more like tougher or whatever it was. And she was put in charge under Renee Berther, like as her co, uh, assistant or governess, whatever to mm -hmm. tell Renee Berther who owes how many spankings for what, um, like if they backflashed, if they accidentally said shit, like there was one time, this is not a joke. Like she said, you just said shit. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. 
And she said, that's another one. And I, and I said, fuck. And now, and she was like, that's another one. And so even when I didn't do it literally on purpose, I still thought you're messing up. Like you still have to go mm -hmm. get those spankings. And so I had to like, no matter what anyway. So it was even to the point where Sarah Willie would be like, okay, you're approved to go get water. We're digging trenches. Yep. You finish your target. Yeah. Okay. Renee, she can go. Christina, you come back first. It's literally yeah. jail. Everything was so regimented all the time. I remember Sarah, like, um, as I was growing up as a very, she was probably four or five years younger than I was very kind of mm -hmm. quiet, reserved person. Totally. Um, very, um, non-assuming. She's wasn't like, I, I would, she wasn't somebody that I would ever consider to be one of these product officers. So her putting being put in that situation, that must have been ridiculously awkward and uncomfortable for her. It was. Um, she, but I saw her as a child get more aggressive, like more. Well, that was, yeah, I think that was an environment that, so as we were there, we were around Sea Org members, we're up there at that international base. The solution, if you're not getting the production that you want, is you yell, you make it happen, you make them work harder, you you take away privileges. Like that's, that's the, the world we were in constantly, constantly, you know. Um, Sorry to pull that oh, up. Oh, no, no, no. This is a good point. Project, so, like, Mike, was there more yelling in the military or Sea Org? Fuck no, there wasn't. There was almost zero yelling in the military. So in the military, everything is like, there's a reason why like some of the military customs, it, this is what, and Aaron and I and with Sterling did a, a kind of a comparison between some military stuff and the Sea Org like pretend crap that they do. When you do these like, high pressure activities in the military, there's a purpose for that. Like in, in an infantry unit, it's like, okay, we're going to do this thing to like, we're going to go get shot at. So we need to be disciplined in this certain way. And a lot of the loud comes because you're in a loud environment and you have your, you, the person that you're over, you need to have this respect and, you know, leadership, but they're, they're also right in there with you and everyone's there on the same terms. And it's not this enforced thing. So all of the military is like everyone in the military, like, volunteered to be in the military and they might do three years and say, you know what, this sucks and they get out. And some people are like, you know what? I like this lifestyle and they stay in. You, you probably know a little of this because you had a taste of that, um, when you were 19, right? So it's, it's a little bit, but in terms of the yelling, that doesn't happen. It's more like corporate America. Um, when you're in the normal office space and there's no weekly statistics and you're not trying, like there's a mission, you're working on a mission. Everyone's trying to work on that thing. And it's, it just, it's not the same. So in the military, like I was used to this whole thing, factually normal military life, way easier than being in the Sea Org. The only thing that was uh, in terms of the psychological aspect that was similar to what we went through is training that I did, which is called SEER school. It's survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. When you're put in a POW camp and beat and yelled at and deprived of water and kept awake and put inside of a little box so that you get used to that. Like, Hey, if I get captured by the bad guys, I kind of know what to do. That's the purpose of that training. And, um, I'm like, wow, this is really familiar. Um, but that was the shit that did you, that, that level quick insert, of did, crazy is what I was used to. Did you get the dunked with ice cold water? If you were late or out of a uniform in front of the muster, you did get, that. uh, well, I got it once and then I didn't get it a second time. He's but like, I'm saying up. that was around when you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah. this was a normal fucking thing. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you had, if you were, if you were late and you were out of uniform, you would stand in front of the cadet muster in the morning and they would take mm -hmm. ice cold water. Literally there was ice cubes and a bucket and say out of uniform, da 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 and dunk you in front of everybody and you'd have to stand so at attention that, while you're doing it. This is and that, they, uh, that too gruesome policy letter. Like, Hey, if people are doing something wrong, you give them a too gruesome, uh, that they don't want to have, and then they'll correct their ways. And then they won't want to have to deal with that anymore. It's like a head that's, on a pike. That's how the, <clears throat> yeah. Is it that um, thing, is, the head on a pike? I remember. <coughs> well, the head on a pike is the idea is if you have a, a group of people that are all messing up, you'll make an example out of one person. That's right. to, you know, it's like thinking like, hey, I'm going to make an example out of this one person. So that everybody stops. Um, right. And it's kind of a similar, a similar thing. It, it Looking at it now, again, <clears throat> when I think about 
when I was there, and I think um, when people have talked about some of the early days, they're referencing it from the lens of when they were a kid at the time, not necessarily through the lens. Like when I'm looking at this stuff now, and I had some worse shit happen than some of my contemporaries did when I wanted to leave and stuff, but um, looking at things now, I'm looking at it through the lens of me as um, a person who's matured into my own life and as a father. And I think as a father is the hardest thing to reflect back on things because there is no way in hell like I look at it and I'm like, well, our parents were absent, but then I had a father that wasn't in the Sea Org and like he wasn't really involved and interested in my education either. I'm just like scratching my head. Like even if my wife and I weren't together, I would still be involved with my kid's life. Like, Hey, what are you doing on the day to day? Like the shit just didn't exist for us. It was very, very strange. So, um, okay. That's so we're, we were talking about when I was sent back, right? This yeah. little mission thing. No, I appreciate you saying all that too, as a father and stuff, because again, as you're saying it, I know I should be listening to you, but I'm thinking my father, in my head, I go, at what point? Scientology doesn't give you that pivot point as a father. Like, ah, that's a little too much. You know, ah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to stop. Nope, no more. I'm going to go be a father. Like, and mm -hmm. as you heard on my phone call that I had with him, that was after so much, so many times of him coming over with knowledge reports. And like, and at a certain point, I was like, dad, and it always ended up like being me and him laughing or I'm like, dad, how are you going to get all these? Like it ended up be being fun, but it was definitely all about Scientology and trying to get me back into the organization or there's a report that I need to look at. And I'm like, yeah. dad, can we just not, you know, can we just not have it do? But like I was going to say, can we just have we just nothing do to do with Scientology at all? And, and to him, that was, he was saying you again with those jabs, he was saying like, I'm jabbing at him. Because you have I a said, disagreement could, with could the way Scientology is dealing with shit. No, no, yeah. no. I was saying, can we, I was like, you can be a Scientologist. I don't care. I wasn't even saying that. I was just like, your mindset is not allowing me. I was, you heard in the phone call. I was like, dad, so can't I just go do whatever? Like, why do I have right. to be Scientologist? And he wouldn't let that go. And, and then I, and then I would say, well, communication is a universal solvent. And then he would get mad at me. Like, you can't use Scientology words Against or phrases no if you're not a scientologist and i said if i'm not a scientologist why do i need to go into the ethics office like anyways yeah. it was a horrible conversation and those clips sadly on that documentary which was supposed to portray a lot more about the cutout organ and everything which never did and i don't know the reason why but i have many obvious like whatever's is that um anyways i was going back to the, the dad my dad is that these were just clips they, this phone call First of all, we had never planned to film this phone call. We were filming something about yeah, the cadets. And, yeah, and I was of, like, it's a blue. Sunday. My dad, I even told the director, Jeff, I was like, my dad may call. And he was like, oh, good. I'll, whatever. Uh, you got it. Uh, whatever it, it was. Yeah. We were already mm -hmm. recording, but it wasn't. We were, we were recording the phone call. My dad just called. So, yeah. fuck all y'all. It's happenstance. Yeah, we were literally documenting as a documentary person would be doing. Anywho. Um, so that phone and so and that phone call was very chopped so what i was trying to say is that even you telling these things it reminds me of like oh i wonder if that will make my dad i wonder like when you said you had children and you're like no none of this would ever be able to be acceptable under like as a dad with yeah. your children knowing they're fucking having hell and the only time you get to see them is for two hours on a sunday back at the ranch like eventually right. as a like dad you would say no relationship yeah yeah it's like, oh, it's so exciting. And then all I know of my mom and dad is that they were so excited to see me and they loved me so much. But is that I a good think, parent? Think, no. So I don't think that that I don't think that that's not true. I think that they did love you, but I think that the what and that's why I said No, like, I know they loved me. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, I but know they did, but but they weren't there. And I also the, the don't normal... understand how you left, Mike. Like, how did you leave after being put through all the kid child cadet? And then enforcing us and then somehow your mind was like well i guess i'm just gonna go to the military because i know i'll be good at that because it can't be much different than the sea org well i had wanted to like when i was 15 um and this is i wanted to join the military and i wanted to leave the ranch and i had tried to and i i kind of wanted i, an, I had that. an idea of what i wanted to do very early on and i went through what made you do that what made you want um, what made you think about military so I was always interested in aviation. 
Um, and but what, what, why do you remember? So my father, my father, when I was, uh, I grew up, my dad was a former Marine. He was oh, a Marine okay. officer. He was in Perfect. Vietnam. Okay. He had been badly wondering. wounded in Vietnam. He got his leg blown off. So I had, a, I had an example of like <sighs> the, the bad shit that happens from war when, uh, from early on, but that was normal for me, but he had always kind of romanticized his time in the military when I was a kid. But, and I thought, but that, how like, old were you when he was telling you this? Like when you I was a kid, been, so when you, you had to be under 10 years old, right? Oh yeah. I was, Cause you were at I mean, the was, ranch at eight. It or was part of his, it was part of his identity when we were growing up. So he was always the former Marine dad and into his Marine, you know, the people that are like veterans and it's just like, there's this. So I saw it more when I was a kid as like this camaraderie, part of his identity, something that he wishes he was able to do more of. And yeah. he got wounded really badly in Vietnam and was forced to retire. So oh, I he totally wishes he could that. have stayed. Right. So me, I was, uh, and I was You're like, like, I okay, want to well. fulfill my dad's steps or whatever. Well, to a degree, but for me, I wanted my own life. And I saw right. that as he would always pump it up about how great it was. And, and so, and that's, this is the thing about military service for some people. It's great for other people. It's like, I don't want to have anything to do with it. And it's very personal as a decision. So that I can't imagine when, that you are already being a cadet and then being in the Sea Org. Like if that was an option, like it's already okay, kind of for example for myself, like if my dad mm -hmm. had told me anything about my previous father, grandfather, great, great friend, anything about their military experience or anything, probably I would have had. Or if my dad even told me anything about music that his family members have are very much with like my anyways. So there's a lot yeah. of that that I'm missing. So. The fact, I think, the fact, like, in the craziest way, the military also saved you full circle. Oh, it it completely did. But okay. I've also, so, you know, like, I think from a young age, and uh, Rosemary mentioned to this, uh, my mom, she mentioned this to me when we were talking the other day. She's like, and and I think you talked to her about this. I always remembered, and she always, I always remember when little Megan, she would always be performing or singing songs or whenever he went out there, she was so... So just look at this. I think that everybody has certain um, things that we have, uh, like passions, uh, things that we are always good at. And for you, it's probably singing and performing. That's something where you feel comfortable. Yeah. Is that, is that an accurate for assumption? For sure, but it took me a minute to realize that I didn't give a fuck about the reactions. It took yeah. me like a three-step thing. I didn't care about the crowd. I was like, I'm in my head and I don't, I really didn't care about, wow, what a great show. I did not care. And I hoped, like, it could have been like, it was horrible. I was like, good, I'm glad I got it out. Like, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, but, it was some, but, but it was something you had a passion for, right? And then I started was, listening. Yeah, then I, oh, for sure. No matter what. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know, what, for sure. And I, I even at a young age. 100%. And I assume, I knew that. And I assume it was because my mother, I just thought, oh, my mom's not trying to show me her ballet pictures or talk mm -hmm. to me about my grandmother being a great tap dancer and a singer before she passed away. Like literally like and being the first female, my dad's mother was the first female uh, female voice on Canadian radio before wow. after I already named me Laura FM. So I was just like, Whoa, Whoa, what? This is so fucking crazy. So. I definitely understand so, the views of a young and not knowing and and seeing your views. Anyways, yeah, continue. Sorry. So for me, my my passion, something that I I really wanted to do is I wanted to fly. Yeah. I wanted to be a pilot and I wanted to be a helicopter I love your pilot. shirt, by the way. I love it Thank because you. it's like little flying Aerosmith. like a, yeah. And, <laughs> but also it's like you, the mic's in the way. So it looks like you just got these angel wings. Like you're here oh, for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to close my eyes. Oh, we, we just saw them in concert. Uh. It was great. I just saw I was just at Power Trip Festival. I told you. Yeah, well that was that was a I lot. can't get so over that's amazing. That. Yeah. I'm still but, I haven't talked about it even a word because I can't. But yeah. So so for me, I wanted to fly. I wanted to be an aviator. I wanted to do those things. That is something that actually requires like I, I am not being set up properly in my life for this. Like you need education. Um, the training is ultra expensive. So um, I asked Rosemary about it at one point and I'm like, I really want to get some books on helicopters and, uh, about military helicopters because I love that idea. And, uh, I very much in my head was like, I was 15. Okay. Um, 14, 15 is when I was like, Hey, I think I really want to do these things. 
And um, when I turned 15, my father, when I was on a vacation with him, he bought me a, a 30 minute flight in a helicopter for my birthday with an instructor pilot and then a one hour in an airplane. And I, it was something that I was instantly good at. And I was like, I really, I really want to do this. So that was in my mind where I wanted to actually do those things when I was 15. And then I wasn't allowed to. Um, but before I get into that story, I do want to go back to what we were talking about. So we don't miss out on, um, I'm there at, uh, in golden air productions, I'm working yeah. for the commanding officer. I'm his little Steve deputy Willett. that I go around Steve, Steve Willett. Willett. Yeah. And his daughter, Sarah Willett, he was, he was not only in charge of golden air productions and ultimately in charge of the ranch. Um, a couple levels down at this point because he's the big executive over the whole organization. But he's also a father that would, that has some degree of direct responsibility for whatever's going on out there and for his daughter. So with all these problems that I guess were going on and, and to be honest with you, so much time has passed. I couldn't specify exactly what was going on, but there was a bunch of things that were out of control. Um, I think there, there was some abuse that had come up. I think they had gotten rid of some kid. There was problems with the, there were kids were kind of just running amok, um, a muck, a muck, a muck, a muck, a muck, what, but whatever. So it was like, Hey, we need to, you know, Can get I, the ranch back under control. Do you know what that kid was? Do you know who that kid was? Um, I do. I'll mention it to you offline. Okay. Um, Corbin just, Dallas, Corbin Dallas, multi-pass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, just, you know, I, I definitely want to share that, but, um, I, I, you because know, because I, I, but I don't want to say, I don't want to get it wrong and like throw okay. some stuff out there and but misstate I, something for somebody, no, but, I but I think I, I also, know who it was Yeah, okay, yeah. because uh, the same person and the same thing had happened. Um, and we found out that he had also done it to my ex-wife, Sam, when she was a cadet there too. Um, but anyway, uh, separate thing. Is it anyway, I was just going to say, is it Gavin? Yeah, exactly. Gavin yeah. K. We'll just say Gavin K. That's exactly who it is. And honestly, I have a lot of empathy for that person as well. So don't assume I mean, the people who are watching that are so afraid to talk about it. Don't assume that this little bitch who was an MA off ethics officer in CMO, who was a trained fucking born and raised cadet, can't handle like like you coming to me and saying, yes, we did that. We molested you. We molested. Fucking get it. Understand the psychology behind it. The reason you're fearing it is because you have not gone to a therapist to understand why you were doing that under age. You were a young child yourself. So, yeah. yeah. That's all I'm saying. So, so like grow some fucking that... balls and shut the fuck up and be brave and do it. Okay. So... I know that that was happening. And then I think just in general, like with that, they were like, oh, what's going on out there? And it seemed like, I don't know, it was a flap. So what what do you do in the Sea Org when there's a flap? Everyone jumps on that flap until something else flaps and you run and jump on that flap. It's just this like, it's it's like whack-a-mole. Like every day it's like you just, you're, you're running to whichever thing is burning the brightest. And then, yep. you know, the other thing is not as important when that happens. So I remember this, maybe this uh, time where I was, um, sent back towards the ranch was about maybe five or five to six day period where it was m at most. Um, and I can remember probably being out there, um, during my normal duty period, um, maybe two or three days before it was then just kind of checking in a couple days. So <clears throat> I'm probably 18, 19 years old at this point. And, uh, this is happening and Steve Willett says, Hey, uh, the ranch is flapping. I don't have time for this crap. You and a couple other people, I guess it wasn't as big of a, a problem when you were there. And the reaction was to send us out there to get everyone to start getting their ethics in and doing the right thing. Um, and for that means like us as in, you know, product officers, we're then going to like, Hey, are you on schedule? Are you doing your your work? Are you going to school on time? Are you sleeping? Are you cleaning your rooms? Are you doing all these things? So for that, it was like, go out there and make sure that they are, um, Were you doing the things that they're supposed to do. I was his, his I was his, I was his org officer. I was his OO. So this makes so much sense now. Like, so he's getting pressured from somebody. Okay. So this is really what's happening kind of at this point, kids, mm -hmm. my age, Sarah Leobard, me, Sarah Leobard convinced me, you should write a RTC report. There's a new board, the, the RTC, I forget what it's called, RTC reports, reports the reports yeah. officer, RTC, 
religious technology. So basically, you're allowed in this report center to they have them. They're supposed to have them in every uh, any Scientology, Sea Org, anything. Anything mm-hmm. they made it a thing, and I wonder about that. I wonder Claire Claire Headley probably knows about that uh, because I also wrote her about her dogs in the report center, and that's how she was able. I was like uh, Jupiter. I was like telling her about her dogs, and I was like, "There's not enough time for me to walk their dogs." Anyway, so uh, because yeah. anyways, so back to the reports office and about that. Uh, I was able to put a report in, and full circle, you were something probably was happening where i was like they're giving us spanking it's going out of control and so i probably as a kid whatever i wrote oh, i wish i could remember what i wrote in that report how yeah. cute and gross would that have been um but whatever i wrote made them whatever i wrote and then sarah leobard wrote a really probably intense thing because she was older than mm-hmm. me three or four years older than me so she knew how to really say Anyway, so we just slipped our things and they're like, we basically were saying this is what's happening at the end ranch. This is literally what's happening. So the response of that uh, for the parents. So now, like if so, let let me again, I'm I'm framing this through the lens of now a father on the way I would deal with this. Oh, sorry. I thought you were still framing it as the assistant of Steve well, Willett, and looking then, at it now, and you're hearing from him like he's getting yeah. orders from RTC. Hey, like, you should send Mike Brown out there because Mike no, no, Brown no, 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 was no. already a cadet. He was just he was he just being no told idea. you need to solve it. He's like, you need to go and As do this. CO you need to solve. Well, his solution, it was his problem to solve. But him as a as a as the CO gold, but also as a father, like he didn't go out there. Right. There's a reason like, what I'm saying, Mike, is there's a reason the he was giving. There. But there's a reason he <laughs> was given this order. Well, they put it on the, the CO gold because the kids were under what? The estates division, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's the responsible. And they're like, oh, good. He also has a child out there. So it'll really tug on his heartstrings. He will want yeah. to know what's going on out there. Right. So his order was like, so normally I'm working all day, every day, getting his like running around at Golden Era Productions, making sure that edits are getting done, that your dad is selling enough e-meters. Like I worked with Phil every day. Yeah. Um, what like about I my was, brother, Jarrett? I don't remember where Jarrett was. I think he was in CMO. But you, right? you remember him, right? Oh, my gosh. Yes. OK. Like he was only, he was like, like two years younger than who me. was Amy Scobie doesn't remember my brother. And I'm like, I. I need to show you a picture or something like, how do you not? Because he went just like you did what, you know, got approved, I think at 17 or eight, got his GED. So then he was allowed. And then they put him as an MAA right away. I think at first, and he was supposed mm-hmm. to be being trained to go up to RTC. He was, a, he was like RTC trainee. That's what they said. Like, or I was RTC. made an RTC trainee after I was uh, working for Steve Willett for about a year and a half. Interesting. Yeah. So they would, so the, those of us, like we were, we were constantly being groomed to like move up to Mm -hmm. higher levels. And again, everything is you're taking these, um, us as kids and we're being plugged into the organization, but we're usually not being given like a couple people ended up in specific jobs. Like for instance, like power Coleman, power Coleman doesn't, I don't, I don't think has the, um, the drive to make anyone do any work. Like power's just a, a goofy kid he ended up doing sfx like so and it was like right. he was just in the i SFX felt like he department. was really smart like he always seemed he sort was of but he wasn't smart, he wasn't but i'm not smart, gonna take orders because like, it seems like that's just like he kind of will follow the group he's yeah he's he's He'll not follow gonna be schedule somebody, but don't bug me because be i really am position. smart right right yeah. So, uh, by the so way, anyway, not to call anybody out, but he also was running in dorms doing things underage. Mm. He also was underage himself. No, I'm just putting it out there. And I'm sure a lot of cadets are like, yep, yep, that's right. Megan's whatever Megan's saying is right. So I'm just saying that. And I so think Power Coleman, to, very sweet. And same with his sister, Ariella. Very sweet. Yeah, I, beautiful. People. I, I definitely remember them. They were they were closer to me in age, but I was older than both. By yeah. a couple of years. Ariella became the um, CO cadets for a while, for like five mm-hmm. years almost. Like her and Tara Harris at one point. Anyways, yeah. So they were like 
So all of us just kind of cycle the whole, but that's the whole point. You're supposed to cycle through these little organizations and they prepare you in this kind of militaristic way in order to be a Sea Org member. And that's your only destiny that you're allowed to have. You're, you're, you're literally going through the puppy mill in order to fart out the other side and then to work (laughs) at the international base. And that's your, that's your only way. That's literally the truth. Cause Valerie Haney light, who I was in the CMO with when I was in Clearwater eventually later, Mm -hmm. she, she was being prepped, groomed, that's what the outside world would know it as, sec checked and interrogated and fucking told like you're gonna possibly be working directly for Dave Miscavige, which means you we're prepping you for int credentials and international mm-hmm. base credentials, gold base. That's what that is. And then uh and and I told her I was in CMO and 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 I and I took over Jenna Miscavige's post as flag crew programs operator. Because At she what, was getting 14, interrogated. Years old? Yes. And she was getting down the hall at the WB on the third floor, getting interrogated. And I was like, Jenna's so sweet. I mean, she's kind of like snobby in her cute Miscavige way, like literally like in her family way. But I was like, she's actually very sweet and soft as I knew her as a programs operator. New post, far from the cadet org, because now we're definitely... You know, we're not not only little children or cadets, we're now Sea Org members in the outside world. Mm -hmm. Even though I've known Jenna literally my whole life almost that I can remember. And in this moment, she's getting sec checked down the hall, which for which I later talked to Jenna and found out it was not because she was we were told that her and Desiree Jakes were being out of valence and they are possibly I thought I was like, is she leaving? Is she trying to leave the Sea Org? Mm-hmm. And it was because later I found out that it wasn't that yet. Later, she was obviously trying to leave, but it was because her unk, her dad and mom were try- were leaving. And and she was getting interrogated like you. Anyways, I just yeah. think that's so fucked up that this whole time that I was taking over her new programs operated that she actually did very well on. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I kind of was similar to her. And what was also fucked up as an in ranch cadet child, they confused me as Jenna because we did look similar. Anyways, yeah, very, you're both you're both little with blonde, blonde hair. Blonde, yeah. And we were just like, mm-hmm. anyways, um, Jenna was always so sweet and quiet, and I was always the loud one, Abby. Get over it, guys. Get the fuck over it. And go see one of my shows, period. Like, then you'll see why I'm like, maybe I'll seem quieter if you go see a show. That's like telling <laughs> ACDC or Metallica to like, shh. To stop screaming on stage. At, at this moment, <laughs> can you just, shh. Anyways, um, yeah, so what I'm saying is that uh, later I'm seeing Jenna down the hall getting sec checked, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, thinking, oh, she must have done something really bad or she's so out of balance or something, like flirting with, yeah. I thought, oh, maybe she was flirting too much with Martini, Martiniano or this like Italian dude that like I always thought they were so cute. Anyways, and yeah. then I was like, what? It, like nobody would tell us anything. All of a sudden, by the way, right before I took over her job, I was mm-hmm. uh, a messenger on the Lisa McPherson case for six months during the whole loss, during that whole, Craziness. I was shredding they only could trust this little nobody. They they know this girl. They know this person that had their, they know my whole record. They know I'm from mm-hmm. the cadet. They know I'm nothing from the outside world. What a perfect child to give this and tell them we have boxes, banker boxes of things for you to shred in this big shredder yeah. that will chop them up to tiny pieces so there's no evidence of anything. So we're, you know, we were... I think okay, yeah. part of the Sorry, problem jumping was, back was and forth, going back. No, but, but as kid, so as a, as children, I think children presented a, uh, an odd problem for the sea organization. There was, there's policy that Hubbard had about how to deal with them on the ship. But fang- frankly, we were an inconvenience and a pain in the ass yeah. for the organization. And from the beginning they were, though, right. From but the we, they weren't equipped, they weren't equipped, nor did they ever put in the effort to properly but they, figure out what to do with us. But they t- they lied. Let's say this clearly. They lied to my mother and father saying, we have an int ranch. And even before they brought them to California, America, from Canada, because my brother and sister were born in Toronto. So yeah, this is what they're going to do with your kids? Yeah, they were saying, we're going to... So, mother and father, please tell me the lie. Please tell me the lie. Because how was I in my mother's stomach 
you know, in her stomach, in her little cute little tummy, ready to nourish and be born two months later in Los Angeles. Like she knew she was taking a flight from Canada to L.A. to be mm-hmm. part of this whole organization, this whole Sea Org thing with Janice being old. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is what they right. all established. Biddy and all them established for my mother to come. And then Mike, I um, mean, you know, Jeff Hawkins then was doing a Dianetics campaign with them. And my mom, you know what I mean? Like, so they're manipulated into thinking like, oh, this is the best option or the best thing to do for your child. Well, from Rosemary the beginning, they're things. lying. From the beginning, Rosemary, they are lying. Right. She thought she was getting into Never a good Never was it good. Group. Sorry. I'm still triggered by, literally, I want to hear what you're saying about Rosemary. I'm still triggered by the one thing you said that Biddy was doing a good thing. I'm still triggered. I'm like, no, it was never a good thing. All of it was a lie. Like, yes, Biddy was doing a good thing based on a lie. Well, based off of Scientology being just Scientology is a lie. Yeah. But so I think she was trying to do a good thing. I don't think it turned out. Of course she was. Of course she was. We're not blaming Biddy. What I'm saying is L Ron Hubbard's process and his mental stability as a human being was very manipulative and very and was lying and he was making up fucking shit and he was stealing black ma- he was stealing really corrupt mind controlling information and manipulative things and calling it auditing yeah and now that auditing is being held and hidden behind a religious status because when we were when i was eight nine years old clapping really hard at the war is over thinking oh i don't know what happened but scientology just did something really good do you not remember that mike do you what how old were you were you at i was at that event i was 15 i wasn't allowed to be at that event because i was restricted to the ranch Wow. So, so why was I allowed to go? Nerd. I guess I was so young. It didn't matter. Well, you were allowed to go because you didn't want to leave the Sea Org, and I did. I oh, wanted to leave when I was 15. This is what was going on. You were, I, Mike did send me, guys, if y'all are still here happily in this chat, Mike sent me some. I remember, so went motorcycle pictures and things of him at the ranch. You want to put some? Kind of. So I was like, maybe I should do just you, do it. Do you feel like we've uh, kind of talked a little okay, bit about you're right. too far? So okay, we, we I want to clear like, some I things. Back as re- missionary. Do you have any other questions about this? Like, what do you want to talk about with regard so now, to that? No, because- the fact that you were Steve Willett. First of all, the fact that you were Steve Willett's assistant, basically, and you oh, needed oh, yeah. to you need to just fucking handle. Go solve orders. this problem. Yep, this is giving anyway. me stress. Go deal with it while I continue to inspect other things. Um, so the fact that you were dealing with that, and then, uh. These orders always come from above, period. David Miscavige knows Mike Brown, Mike Brown's history, my history. David Miscavige knows as a, he knows through our parents. He, he, and if he doesn't know, he'll know in five five minutes. Give me that folder. Give me their life history. Um, mm. So it's not like, and he used to do base inspections all the time at the Int Ranch. All the time. Once a year, if not. Exp- uh, oh, my God. White Globe Pass. Everything has to be White Globe Pass. dog and pony show. So what I was saying is that um, obviously people can probably see. I feel like we should digest and do this again for sure, Mike. Like I feel mm-hmm. like there's so much and I, we're still digesting mm-hmm. as we're talking about it. For sure. I mean, literally, we're trying to. A lot of people don't to, realize that. We're trying to talk about um, like a decade and of good time shit that it and passed. Shit. Yeah. And yeah, things so- I'm remembering. Okay. I had a question here. Like I have so many quick questions. Didn't you... Get a fucking, I remember this from hauling rocks out of the creek. Didn't you, something happened with you at the bridge, which I've shown in my earlier episodes. I did a really cool, because I'm such oh, a you, cool Oh, you mean on the uh, the flood? Of uh, the bridge, but I remembered something, something happened. Some I remember some story about the bridge and some metal piece or something flew into your eye from the bridge when you guys were trying to br- fix so the bridge or something. Is that wrong? So you're remembering two things, um, okay. which I can tell real fast. So there was a, the bridge had collapsed and there was a bunch of rubble. 
and the as bridge we had collapsed move, because the fucking creek overflowed and they it did was, not prepare this is that same this was that same massive flood that it hit the um that happened and then it flooded the whole g's yeah and, and that, that yes. huge flap at, at <laughs> oh gold my God, it well, we, we were like all the kids out there yeah we could and, they, they were getting food to us by a zip line across the creek jackson uh, had set that up Thank um, oh anyway. my god i'm so glad you just confirmed that because i talk about that in like one of my beginning when i first started i mean this is what was funny i would say that. no He's... they when we had evacuation drills because the creek we would just say up oh, the bridge overflowed that's what we called it up oh, the bridge mm -hmm. is overflowing we need we're zip line they it, and i said that a police people, system up to people get are like across. who did yeah. that and jackson was like yep we did that but now you're saying yep jackson set it up to well, do it but yet so jackson had his uh, had his hand in a pretty much anything that had to do with the safety or of the organizations yeah but extreme um, so, like this is a hill 10 as they would call it or a flap right so okay. that was one thing so when we were then trying to deal with this bridge that had collapsed I, we were doing stuff with you know trying to move big rocks around in order to get it ready to rebuild and uh one of them had shifted and it pinned my hand against um another rock and a, a that's crowbar. that's so there was that that's what then, that's sorry that i mixed up with some metal piece getting in your eye but and i had and time, i had another thing i can't where tell I got you why mike eye. mike every time i don't know I why go, you remember even, that shit i don't either <laughs> that's what i'm getting to i don't either and guess what every time i go when i went back to the fucking ranch to film all mm -hmm. this fucking shit that i thought was supposed to be for this documentary that was only about the end ranch I also just happened to just take my own phone footage because I was like, whoa, in my heart, I was like, I need to get this on film. Like when I yeah. was when I was ever this close to the bridge, it was only for two reasons. I was blowing mm -hmm. like I was trying to leave or we were rock hauling and we were moving away rocks, hauling big rocks. Spent to a use. lot of time in those creeks. Oh my God, Mike. So anyway, so, thing, was, like, anyway so I was filming and when I was filming, mm -hmm. every time I filmed that footage, I think. What was that thing about Mike Brown and the and the, so I got his, my hand pinned in there and I ended up getting I, it out yeah, and I didn't have any problems. As a problems, kid I, hearing that, okay, but as a kid hearing that, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe this is what they're talking about. I don't know. I I just remember but that there was another time I got a sliver of metal okay. in my eye. We were banging out some concrete over by the back of the motel unit to do some stuff, and I wasn't wearing safety glasses. Wow, two separate things. And okay, there are two separate things. But then I had a shard of metal. It was actually in embedded in my eye. eye. Yeah. So I they had to take this. me to the hospital. The ER couldn't <laughs> fix it. They sent me to a, uh, an eye doctor, and he had to stick a needle into my eye while ah! I was awake, and then push the shard of metal out like like go in there and like pull no, it out a little I'm, bit and I'm then he can get it oh my god i can't hear this oh my god i was like <laughs> how, should i take these ear head uh but there was a there was a super why. bright side to no. that whole thing but after that i had eye damage so they're like you need to keep your eyes focused and one point i heard about um, this no why and do I'm i like, know okay I don't and know you, had you had a patch you had a patch but something. i had to keep my eyes focused so like you need to just watch tv for yes. five days because you have to Wait. be dry focused. Oh so I God. just watched movies Wait. for five days. Now I remember. <laughs> now I so remember. I, I remember as a kid anyway, thinking, yeah. no, Mike, I'm not kidding. I remember thinking, like, he well, if that little dickhead, I was thinking, well, that little fucker is just relaxing, watching movies. I mm -hmm. remember. Doctor's orders. I know, Mike, this is why I know this. And this is also why I probably mixed the bridge incident with that. Like, who knows? Mm -hmm. I all I remember is that the reason I remembered the metal thing in your eye is that because for a few days, I think you had to really just keep your eyes focused on one area and and watch movies, which movies. you were so excited to do. Well, as a normal kid, you would a doctor would just say, "Hey, put your kid in front of the TV for a few days and just have him watch it." Like he needs to keep his eye focused at a certain point. That's a normal ask in the real oh. world for us. I'm like, "Oh, you mean I get to watch movies?" I'm like, "Oh, okay." I could. I remember so, that. Anyway. I forgot. See, like that, Mike. I totally forgot about that, and I yeah. remembered. But do you understand? That's that is the reason I remember that memory of you, is that Mike Brown for days got to watch TV, and I was wondering. That what, asshole. What accident? No, <laughs> no, because you weren't an asshole then. You were just an older. Cadet I was an to asshole me. later, but okay. you were an yeah. asshole later for sure. Later, but but you weren't an asshole then. And I was just remembering, thinking like, I was like, oh, 
this is so fucked up, guys. I, I remember thinking, what could I do to do that as well? What could I... I remember how hurt could I get so that I so I, I could do that. Um, and then later I did try to lie about breaking my wrist or something, which did work a few times. Oh, goodness. Um, the doctor right. at the hospital told me I do have a fracture. And I was like, no, I don't. Hmm. I was a kid. Oh, I was like, I'm lying. Wow. But I was like doing it so good. I was like, no, I found the bike. I can't do it. I, was, uh, I don't know if obviously it's not directly from your thing, but obviously somewhere in like my like hey there's some benefit to getting hurt i was like hmm yes there was some benefit at one point i rubbed fucking poison oak all over me so that i could go to iso so kids that aren't getting attention will do stuff like that yeah that is a that that is is i learned that that, i'm not gonna say it's a normal response no that's that's, i learned that in trauma therapy yep and from neglect and yep wow wow all right um you said you had some other questions what else you got on there so I said, um, oh, yeah, I was going to ask you about spankings. Did you know that the spankings were happening? So I knew that spankings were a thing. Um, like, did, no, sorry, I, don't I already know knew you did to, because you would you did send a few of us to go get spanked. But did you ever see it? it was like, did no. you ever see how they did it? I, I didn't. Um, and I'm because both... they always pulled us behind something. They would always be like, we're going like they pulled Amber Porter one time and she was older by this point. She's like, mm-hmm. she was like 13, I think, or 12. And she was yeah. mature, like she had boobs and stuff. See, and that's I was so, just like, that's how are Martin and Kat? Because say Kat, that was his radio name. Kat come in, Kat. Casavius. I was like, and Casavius, if you're watching, I would love to talk to you. Like, don't be afraid. I'm just also remember that i have trauma too like i may not say the thing nicely that i should say probably you know what i mean anyways mike you probably do that already with me i understand what you're saying yeah i'm I'd so, like, but that's not um, the point the point is for us to heal so let's just be open and honest so did i did i know that there were spankings occurring yes yes because it was part of the it was it was in the the like yeah. the the hubbard orders Punishment for how you order. handled those kids yeah right. so Yes. Um, now okay. What was and then, my but I was going to say, did you actually that? physically see it? Because that's a whole different thing. It was really I, intense I and psychotic. Yeah. What you've what you've explained, um, and that's why I was like, as you're explaining this stuff, is like, I need to talk to Laura yeah. about this. Like, I'm I'm seeing this as like shit. I don't like, like that's what the I'm number hearing. one. One of my yeah, number feel one questions was like, did Mike ever actually see what the punishment was? Like with his own um, eyes instead of I didn't, just saying, but like, I under I knew that spankings were happening, but it what you what you're explaining doesn't sound like a, a spanking. Um, it sounds worse. And um I don't I like always why I resented you so much is because I oh, always thought that you were the one who said the the way to spank is to bare butt uh three slaps like you were the one who instigated that um, that's what they stuck to somebody did that so i don't know that i was ever in the position so i know i went out there like when i was ranch staff i was like in charge of um the grounds and doing heavy equipment stuff and then i went to the base and i came back for that period of time to like try to you know enforce that everyone's doing the right thing I was never in a situation where I was in charge of the kids to do that stuff directly, but I do not condone it. And I, I feel embarrassed that I was part of that situation. I know that I was injected into it, whether I wanted to be or not, but I do not think it was wholesome good or anything was. So what would be the point of spanking, you know, because there's, Let's just look at it again through the lens of what is society doing? You're going to have some parents that believe in spanking and some parents that don't. My wife and I don't spank our kids. We talk to them and if they get a penalty, it's like they, they're not able to do something they want to do. They aren't, you know, they're, they don't get to watch TV or they something. um, And then when we get to the point of like, Hey, this is what you did wrong. You need to teach the person what they did wrong. Even if they're a, the little kid like hey they need to understand it in their own way the physical abuse and violence we don't think fixes that um i even though i'm in the military i i don't physically like 
violence. I don't like fighting. I don't like like this fighting interaction and stuff. Um, it makes me ill to think of it. So thinking about the, the stories that you talk about, and that's why I was like, I need to get on and talk with you about this so that we can discuss it some. But I, I don't know that I was ever in the situation of like, this is how you spank the kids. If you remember me like that, I'm very sorry that you do, but um, I hate that. Uh, and I hate that, like for me, uh, and prior to this, and I, I kind of talked a little bit with uh, Aaron about this yesterday. For me, it's been hard to look at like, it's been easy for me to look at what is my, um, what does my own story look like in terms of like my sob story on the, the shit that I had bad happen to me. But it's hard. It's been hard for me to look at like, wait, as I've had to interact with, uh, interact with other people coming to the realization that like you have bad memories of me. Um, and I kind of have looked at like, well, how could that be? Because I didn't see it that way at the time. Um, but you obviously did. So that's why I want to then have this discussion so that we could air those things out. Um, because that's, I think, hard to approach and to talk about. It's not something that's comfortable. Um, and it's not comfortable sitting here going over it, but I think it's important that we do. Yeah. So let me let you talk now. I'm dry. So. Okay. I've realized like a lot of things. I realize that people in the Sea Org are forced to be in positions where they have to be the uh, abuser. Um, or the enforcer. But like, isn't that the same thing? Right. Um, it is. Or not. Um, no, I mean, that's where I'm questioning because that's why so the, my, my question was very clear. Like, did you actually, who, every time so I go the answer to, the to that is no, is but I tried so to. It's so insane. It's the most dramatic. Like, it sounds horrible. And the worst thing is to have somebody later that you were close with or are close with on another level when you're apparently being a good child, right? So like Cat yeah. Casavius, like I was really close with him. We both loved horses and like like we just were fun and I wanted to learn how to I loved the tractor. I wanted to learn how to drive the backhoe and he taught me he said, Hey, I approve La or Megan to drive the you know, lawnmower and I was like, Oh, it was so fun as an eight year old trust me to be able to cut the sports field and take two hours to do that and nobody could say no because that was my project. Yeah. Like these little things and like so I can, I can at least give up comparison on something. Um, and hopefully it helps frame it. So I think everyone pretty much knows who Claire is, right? Claire Headley. Um, yeah, she's yeah. an amazing person like without, like specifically without Claire and her direct help and her like taking time, not only through the, the, the foundation to help Rosemary, but being there for us, it would have been almost impossible to get my mother out. So Claire is one of the most why, selfless. Do you, do you think, can I just ask why in detail, like on that specific thing? Like, cause Claire's amazing. We know that. I like, I love Claire, yeah. but I'm just Absolutely. saying like, what did, was it the aftermath or was it Claire? Like, do, is it Claire's knowledge of gold base and what they're going to do and how, or was no, it no, the no, no. aftermath well, give you guys money to be able to just always like, up? Oh, we need it. Like I said, like a lift or whatever you need. It's just that. Yeah. 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 So there, those things are true, but Claire personally, like as I'm trying to work out, because there was a lot of logistics to work out, to get my mother out of California and anytime day or night, I could pick up the phone and Claire's right on the other end. Claire's busy. She's a mother of three and she's a businesswoman. She's got a lot of shit going on. She made that a total priority at any time. And anyone who has interfaced with Claire or watched her videos, she is like that. And like she, what you see on those videos is the Claire that you know. Um, so we can agree that Claire, so uh, the, the point being, we can agree that Claire is an amazingly gentle, loving person. In fact, yes? Claire, yes, Claire, um, and you would 
I don't know what your intention was at this time or you had no idea or anything, but you like friend requested me or something on Facebook. And I was like, oh, it's Mike mm-hmm. Brown. And then I was like, I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. Like, I was like, well, oh. And then you Claire texted talking, me. Mm-hmm. Right. Claire texted me and was like, hey, you know, I had no idea what you're doing, what your life is. I had no sure. idea, nothing, literally nothing. <clears throat> and Claire so, just kind of mentioned like, hey, Mike Brown's there. And I was kind of like, well, fuck him if he doesn't like fuck whatever he's doing if he's not gonna you know and she was like no i think he just really wants to and then and i still ignored it i ignored it i was like Mm -hmm. i just didn't even i think i just i'm so rude i just didn't respond anyways and then i saw your videos and everything that and and everything and i was like wow like literally within 24 hours because i was like obviously like oh what's the next one? Oh, he just did a second oh i want to i was like oh this is this is mike this is mike like literally f- his own so, uh, mi- like probably anyways, a yeah. different person than w- who in your mind you had me 100 percent. and right? then i was wondering so let like me, yeah Ooh. let me let me explain for you how i saw claire when i was at gold I was terrified of Claire. Wow. Also, I took care of Claire's dog this at is, the Int Ranch. And right. I thought that was, and it was, it was a very important job. And I needed to write to her every, oh, that's where we go. Full circle RTC reports. So I just sent her the reports through the RTC notebook, like in the envelope, yeah. in the box and about the dogs. And then I told her what about spankings and all that. And something happened from that, but go ahead. Sorry. So, so when I was at gold, I was terrified of Claire because the position she was in, the fact that if you would say anything to anyone in RTC, it's your ass. Like you're, you're absolutely, you're going to end up restricted OGH. You're going to go to the RPF. Like you're, you're just, you're, I became fearful of people in positions over me. And even though I'm not generally a feel, uh, a fearful person, that's how I saw Claire. Um, then contrast that against the Claire that we all know and love. Like these are not the same. The person that I had in my mind was not not an accurate representation of the actual person being pulled out of the situation of the int base, Scientology, and all that. The way that they would have their actual like personality and the way that they handle things in life versus the the um, way that they were existing in order to uh, fit into the mold of that organization for their own survival. Um, and that is me looking back at like, how could I be such a, um, an unpleasant fixture in your memory probably is something similar to that, that I was, I was a person that wasn't what was not there for you. And I had my own shit going on to such a degree that we're just all become part of like a cog in the machine that just, just keeps rolling over people. Um, the one thing that the Sea Org and Scientology never was for me was a safe place where I ever felt that I could share my feelings, uh, my thoughts. If I ever had a problem, I could voice my opinion. Fuck no. Um, it was terrifying at all times. And I'm even guessing when you were down and this is complete conjecture down in, in Florida working for the CMO, you experienced similar things to this. hundred percent. So so I, I would expect you to, and then looking at like, why, why does she not want to talk to me? Why does she not like, because I was thinking like, holy crap, like for me, I left and I went to the army after I got out of the mill. Like when I got out of the Sea Org, I left everybody behind. I didn't talk to anybody, any of my previous life. I just started from scratch and all of the things that I went through, I compartmentalized them away and put them behind me. And then as I've slowly started talking to a few friends that are, you know, about the same age as me, and then people that are willing to talk, I actually am hungry to go over it because I have so much unprocessed shit of my own that I need to do that. Um, Like not to be godlike or universal or whatever, but like if this experience didn't happen to me, obviously I wouldn't maybe be this tough like personality away from society's norm. But also yeah. at the same time, I it's so sad to really start enjoying and loving life and writing all these great music and having performances and realizing truthfully like how much was stolen and 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 put in a certain way that we're like how detrimental is that? I'm a wild butterfly. That was horrible to do to me. 
Yeah. And I'm not like not you. I'm just saying like Scientology does does this this frame of mind. You should it should absolutely be so illegal to do this to human beings. To have children involved in something like Scientology and like this was the upbringing was <laughs> it was not right. Um, and it should but, have like, never Mike, been. You the way were that it lied was. to every step of your childhood. Tell me one time you actually did achieved something you wanted as a child. Um, like riding your motorcycle for what? How long were you allowed to ride? Could we pull that photo up? How long were you well, allowed yeah. to ride your so motorcycle? Eventually, I ran over for an hour. and broke his leg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was going to say Matt Price and Justin Justin ran over Jean Tomasovic and broke her hip when they were roughhousing in a car. They didn't talk about that, huh? Oh, do you, um, do you know that the story on it? Yeah, so it's, they were I don't know. Of, I, th I think they were just being playful, and then one of them so they accidentally. Were, no, it, it was a huge. It was a huge it, thing. That I happened. remember so this as was, a kid. I could not believe that Jean Tomasovic got hurt. I was like, I was well, like, she was oh sitting on the wheel well of a large, um, I think, flatbed truck. Yeah, and Matt and Justin were or in the van the cabin. or something. Yeah, no, no, no. It was a big truck. It okay, was like the remember we had truck. the big deliver. It was a problem. No, it was truck. one of the big oh. delivery trucks. It's one of the flatbeds from Gold. And okay. she had a driver's license and was as good at like she was one of the few people that could drive this right. thing. It like drove oh, like a totally. semi. It was very, very large. And she um, also later drove all the, the school bus and all the big she correct, knew, yeah. I think she had some license or previous experience or whatever. Anyway, sorry, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so so Justin, they they were inside and Matt and Justin. I don't know what the they, circumstances. Maybe I think they were, they were playing just playing. Yeah, I think they were roughhousing they, as friends. Like, they, oh, fuck they you bumped, up doing it or something. Yeah, they bumped the parking brake and the thing started to roll. And she was in a position where it pinned her between the tire and the wheel well. And it it broke her pelvis and like she was yep. badly hurt. This is the thing. This is why like safety was never really a thing there. Whenever you park a truck, do you know what the first thing is you do emergency as soon as you get brake. out of the truck? Emergency. You put on the emergency brake and then you chuck the tires. You put blocks in front of the tires. Right. So in case the shitty emergency brake doesn't hold or somebody bumps it, that the thing doesn't roll. Um, that is like the most basic safety mechanism that you do. But there was safety was not ingrained as part of what we did on, in anything. Yeah. Um, no, sometimes there would be, but, but that was an example of a huge accident that almost killed someone. Um, but that happened so many times, Mike, like I can, I'm like, I'm yeah, rolling was a lot of my, instances. even the, like, okay. I remember, um, uh, Tim Hines. I just added again, Tim Hines, if you're watching and Bruce Hines, I would love to get a father and a son. I don't know what their relationship is right now, but I would love to have you guys on if you want to talk or just even talk privately as, but Tim Hines, as a curious boy, as you say, probably eight or nine years old, was in the mm -hmm. maintenance shed and we were learning how to use all kinds of tools. We already knew how to use a shovel and dig a trench and do all kinds of rakings. Like, obviously, we're bored of that. So here we are. He was like pulling. He found a bullet, a full bullet from one of the Indians, like the native Indians that are on the. Pro we were right. And yeah. And he went to the in the maintenance shed and he took the metal uh device went, yeah and he wanted to open it up so that he could see the powder in it and it blew up in his face doing that and also tim hines had like hernias i remember all these horrible things about kids that were my friends that were tim hines was always yeah. so sweet as a cadet he was never like an aggressive ever like I could tell yeah. you some of my friends who are quite aggressive, um, but Tim Hines was so sweet and all this stuff. I remember all this, like you going to think I'm going to forget about this. No, there's no way we forget about this. Especially well, hopefully when we, can we see your kids or like start, people... you know, st start to share these things and process them because like we you are, talked about, Mike, like, like yeah. you being well, here is so brave. I love that. Me being here, Lara, little Lara, <laughs> little Lara. Because Megan. when we're, when we're young, our memories, especially in traumatic events, like for you, you tied together like the bridge, the eye totally. thing, like all of that. Right. And, you know, and the way we have to process this is we and get I was like, oh, he must be so tough. I was like, he must be so tough being sent back to reinforce the justice. Like he could deal with anything. Like I was he really the, could was be the in the CEO's, military. I was the right. CEO's enforcer. So we for were stuff afraid of you, but then there would be moments like when we were doing the correct fire breaks on time and you looked and you're like, good, the dorms are good or whatever. You did 
you did oh i just i'm like get thrown back i do remember your sweet smile i remember you being like yeah see you guys are doing a great job i think so and for some reason i i don't know if it's uh, let me show it or maybe not but i don't know if it's the sea org promo thing that is also you know how i mix two things i don't know if you were there with your Sea Org uniform, or if I was always your mind, you, me knowing who you were as a child, and then later on in my whole years of being in the Sea Org and Scientology, always knowing that you were you on the fucking Sea Org promotion flyers all the time. And I'd be like, oh, that's. So that's- I wasn't in a full uniform when I came out there. I was literally just in slacks. In black and, and white. And- yeah, in black and whites. No, no, no. It wa- I wasn't wearing a jacket and a hat and all that. No, I was just, just in the my white daily thing uniform. The, but to us, I think we, we had a white shirt and I had a, a tag. And yeah, then I had that looked black like official. Like up, he's well, yeah, yeah, nobody yeah, fucking did. walks around the ranch like that. It's like red shirts, yeah. khaki shorts. And even the adults wore white shirts and khaki shorts. There was no, and the only other uniform was the RPFers. It would be their they were uniform. Wearing black. So, do you have the photos that I, some of the photos I sent you? Yeah, let's see if I can we do should. this. Without so, let's pull up. This is, river. So, let's Jesus. pull up some of the younger ones of me. This is uh, Mike Brown, like when I'm probably 13 years old. Um, well, let's I look see. At these I don't know if I'm, like, I'm that oh, good, look. Mike. Jesus. Let's see. This, uh, <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> we're both like trying to learn StreamYard. There's no time. Absolutely. We'll and I don't, I look, I would rather <laughs> create music and art and beautiful things than do this. And I know I need to. And I'm getting there, guys. It just takes longer for some, <laughs> especially when we're on our own, right? Yeah. So at I some point, some Sterling and I are going to do the story. Uh, we're going to talk about how I ended up getting that motorcycle because I Wait, totally so which, lied in order to go and photo- pick it up. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, also, I would love to even just for my own, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I would love to have Sterling on with a live with you and just be like, no, Sterling. Like, I would love, uh, honestly, I don't look at the comments until near the end because there's so much rude shit that people say without, you know, they judge the book by the cover for sure. <laughs> Uh, and I don't give a fuck. And I'm like, good, do that. And sometimes I want to pull it up and be like, hey, bitch, don't say that rude thing. Anyways, um, but so which photo should I pull up first? Because just pull up anything. We'll we'll just go through them and I can explain. It. Okay, I want to I want to pull the up ones this where I one photo younger. because uh, Mike, you I always look young. Too. Take off your hat. <laughs> you look like you look. Yeah, you look well, like I got Eric's. gray going on yeah, in here. It doesn't. We can't see it. First of all, I have wrinkles under my eyes. People can't see that. Oh, I do too. So I'm using. But the Mike, not, take off your hat because you have thing. a full head of hair. I've always known you as a full head of hair. Yeah, so uh, get I'm rid of that good, military. Um, I think the hat needs to go for the rest of the stream. Well, this is this is my buddy. Aaron Smith Levin is, is jealous this. of you. Oh, so what is this that? This particular hat is it's a picture of a Chinook on there, and then it's just my um I have my friend's initials. You may have heard uh-huh. about a Chinook. Uh, it was a logging Chinook. It actually crashed and the crew died. They were doing firefighting, um, I think in the Midwest, and and it crashed in the water. Um, uh-huh. and the crew died. That was one of my best friends. So this is actually a memorial hat for him. Okay. Well, then uh, that happened mind. last year. That's... <laughs> I'll, I'll stop then. No, I was just saying, I love, uh, I love a full head of hair. And also I hated the fact that Simon nine, when I was 19 years old, married to my husband at the time, mm-hmm. I hated that he always had to wear a military hat, like for his job. Cause I just mm-hmm. loved his like cute little spiky hair. Like I just wanted him to like show his head and he couldn't. He was like, I was like, but honey, you look so hot. Anyways. And he was just like, babe, I got to put my fucking hat on. Anyways, <laughs> this is just funny. So it just reminded me like, no military boy, show your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's see if I can do this. All right. Yeah, you little fuckers. Also, just so you know, like, if I really didn't somehow find myself, I think one of the reasons I didn't join the military or Air Force, and that also was a choice for me. A a few of my friends, Amy Carr, Simon's sister, who I was married to, eventually joined. She's, I think, still in the military. Um, Plumy, Susie, like all these cadets that I grew up have joined the military now. So I'm like, okay, so this is something that I mentioned. Crazy. So, so it is, there's more female, um, cadets that have joined the military mm-hmm. than the, than the normal societal average for military or for males versus females in terms of population density. Right. Right. And I think that that has a lot to do with the way we were raised, but that is, uh, 
statistically very um, unusual for right. so more than one or two out of 80. Wait, hold on. I didn't even finish. Becky Hughes joined. Like uh, there's Lindsay, other, like I was I like, oh my God. Boot camp or something. That's what I'm saying. Like that right, is right, an right. option. It's like, okay, well, here's this stable thing in the outside world. Mm -hmm. And, and honestly, Sea Org and Scientology don't really condemn it. They just are like, whoa, if you have enough energy to, to join that, then you should definitely be in the Sea Org. That's what they're thinking. Right? Yeah, but I think that, I think. Or that they also don't like that you're connected to government. Well, they they look down on military service because they have this like we don't want war and and I'm and I'm fine on that I don't want war either but um, it seems like I always got the impression that even though they do this whole pretend navy shit they do look down on government like civil service and government anyone anything that's connected to government they think like I've been reading these old little sentences and policies like I want to mm -hmm. pop those up too but they're literally like. Hey, these kids could probably overthrow the the school jute like the, <laughs> ju like L. Ron Hubbard's approving this or the LRH calm like this is insane. Right. Like we do in the in the Sea Org, nobody approves anything other than Dave Miscavige when it comes to extreme situations. Yeah, Lisa McPherson case was run and dealt with from the beginning before it was a lawsuit by Dave Miscavige. I when I was leaving the Sea Org in Clearwater, I was in I was doing you know, laundry for the auditors while I was approved to be able to be going on route online. Like basically I was like, but I work for a long card Kardasinski for with him in the laundry for dry clean the whole time, the whole three times that I was trying to leave the Sea Org in Clearwater. Yeah, it sucks. My but Alon Kardasinski was the C S on the Lisa McPherson case. Oh, okay. He told me himself the reason I'm not getting sent to the RPF is because legally that would look like we, the person on the case, if they were to did investigate, something did something wrong. So and now Dave Miscavige is just having him do laundry at the Hacienda. What, this was years ago. This was almost 20 years ago, guys. Uh, and I was there trying to leave and I would be and I learned and he taught me. He showed me opera music. He showed me all this stuff because he was like this intelligent, insane, amazing guy. He was even trying to convince me to stay. He was like saying, like, I know you're almost out. But, you know, anyways, it's pretty insane. He pa R.I.P. He's passed away from cancer. But he was and did pass away on that job because David Miscavige put him on that job because he didn't legally. Anyways, I don't know where I got from that. But Lisa McFerris case, clear what everything. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. What do we have for photos? Are you able to uh, grab yeah. some? Are you ready? So, oh, I was going to say about this photo. I just it's so crazy how and you'll know this, Mike, when I bring this up. How was this? How? These photos, Mike Brown is never sitting so sweetly like this. Okay, let's just share this. But this is these were probably one hundred percent like like PR. Oh, look, he looks so good. Look, this was for Christmas. a Christmas card. Yeah, it's yeah. a Christmas. Yeah. And behind you, right here, here I'm gonna zoom That's in, the guys. Schoolhouse right here. Yep, this is the schoolhouse that I would blow and run away from all the time. And this would be the basically the grass area that my brother or somebody was trying to run and get me. But so they did a bunch of photos like this with all of us. I remember I had a look here with the these, Ant Ranch. We would take these uh, these pictures and then we would give these as um, gifts Christmas to our cards parents. For to Christmas. our parents mm -hmm. for Christmas and said, look, we did this cute photo shoot for you. And there was a one, uh, there's one with me and uh, the dog, uh, the husky we had, Wolfie. There was a couple years before. Oh my that, god! Or... Let me show that. Wait, that was one of my questions. It said in the photo, "Is that Wolfie?" It is, yeah. So I can't tell you guys. Okay, let me pull it up. Okay, I cannot tell you, Mike, how many times I howled with Wolfie. Like so this was straight a, up made Mal him howl, Malamut. and it somehow made me feel really good to be like. Do you remember the hair blowouts that dog would have? He's in the middle of the desert, and he's like, "Oh built my for god, like he, he would have like fur just like <laughs> falling off of him." Oh, but he was really also okay. Let me pull it up. He really was like a fucking wolf. Like I swear, I think he was full wolf, <laughs> maybe one percent husky. <laughs> okay, let's. See <laughs> he was a cool it, dog. Oh my God. And he also was very wild, Mike. He definitely had a tendency to 
kind that's of some nerd. Some... That's a nerdy ass photo. I don't care. <laughs> Look at that beautiful doggy. Yeah. Wolfie. Oh my God. Wolfie. Wow. Okay. So you can see to, this was a little bit earlier. Mike. This is when we, I think that that is still um, behind you. That a is, couple years later oh, is, is when that? that first photo came. This is, uh, I think, when we oh, this are. Uh, Schoolhouse. The schoolhouse is right and up in the corner. And this is uh, olive tree or something, right? I remember this. Um, the yeah, schoolhouse sort of is bush. here, the left side. But like there's basic... a bunch of landscaping not yet done. Is right. What you're so seeing where there. you were just, where everybody just saw Mike in the last photo is basically right here. All of this laying down. Yeah, is him laying down on this grass that eventually was here. But I think this was so an I was earlier probably... photo of you. I was yeah. probably maybe 14, maybe 14 in this wow. photo. And in the other photo, I was probably 15 and a half or so. Isn't that crazy, Mike? Like, so wolf, mm -hmm. so even these animals have connections to our timeline. Like, um, who would, who do you think was the owner of Wolfie at the ranch? Danny Hill. Whoa. Whoa. He was the, what? he was the original owner okay. of Wolfie. I had no fucking idea about that. Especially, mm -hmm. I hate to say this. But Danny Hill did have some bad things about cruelty stuff to animals, whether that was Scientology raised or not. I'm just saying those were like the like no idea that I that Wolfie was Danny Hill's dog. Wow. Originally, yeah. So then, then I, I don't felt know if you like remember, it was, okay. Yeah. What Matt had uh, Matt had one of the uh, Matt Price had one of the Germans uh, originally. Wait, no, Tasha. No, no, no. Who? Wait, let's stay on Wolfie for one second and then we'll go. Who okay. do you believe later became the owner of Wolfie? Was it a, a maybe Lindsay or Becky? No, probably. But who was the real adult? Remember, because only adults can really take care of animals. I couldn't remember. Honestly, I'm drawing a blank on it. OK, well, Leslie Epstein. Maybe she okay. just became the handler of it since. Maybe it you know, was because. Because Danny Nathaniel Hill got was... offloaded. Danny Hill got offloaded. And one of the reasons, I hate to say this, Danny, if you're out there listening, one of the reasons because he was having cruelty thing. I don't even want to say it, actually. I can't even say it because it's so fucking horrible. Um, it's not that horrible. It's horrible to me in the moment of something that I was dealing with. And same with him and a bunch of shit. But so. So that's crazy that that was his dog. And so then that had to get shifted over to probably Leslie Epstein, who was the, like, kind of the qual, like, she took care of, like, like you know, emotional or auditing. Stuff. Yeah, like, if you had an upset Tech or checking AC, for kids. And she was the only one that was, oops, sorry, she was the only one able to use the e-meter. And she would be, do you remember this, Mike? She, uh, it's on my thing. Do you remember Leslie Epstein would be smoking cigarettes while she was you know using she, the e-meter in front of children? Like, in that little died, room, you have to have She died on the RPF with cancer. Rosemary from cancer, yeah. With Rosemary? Oh, my God, that means mm -hmm. my dad probably... Your was Rosemary there. was on the RPF with Phil. Yeah, I know. I just so you know, guys, y'all listening out there, uh, me and Rosemary talked and wow. Like wow. Like wow in three ways. Maternity, I felt holy crap. I felt like almost like I could almost hear my own mother's voice uh out and like possibly hoping to see that I could see my mother being like, yeah, Laura. And then, and then I saw like, maybe my mom would be like, I just love you so much. And thank you. I don't know, whatever. So I saw mm -hmm. that. So that heals a little bit of that big hole that's empty. Um, right. and then I also saw like this, um, oh my God, I saw this like abandonment of like Rosemary and when we were in the galley of the office of the uh, uh sorry when we were in the back office of the galley where Panuccio and the whole the whole thing was I remember mm -hmm. going back there on the Purif I was a nine ten year old on the purification rundown with Danny Dunnigan's wife and Rosemary was all of a sudden she was like always doing these fancy things for the execs, like steward mm, stuff. She's making plates and stuff for him, yeah. Yeah, and then all of a sudden she was in the galley, and then she was like doing her seven hour graph or something or whatever. Every time that I would come off the pier if to wait for the van ride, or I was doing my own pier if like writings of 
you know, I had to write, you know, at the end of the pier, if you had to like, and I didn't have time to do it at the pier. So I was doing it in the office waiting for the van ride back to the ranch. So they're like, go back in the office. And every time I would see Rosemary and I was like, how is Rosemary here when she was this like servant to these executives? Like, and then she was in gum boots and like a white, I just felt like, how is this sweet person doing this? At that time, she started sending me packages. I must have told oh, really? her like, I must have yeah, told yeah. her something in there like, well, I'm not doing good on the pier if, like, I don't know. I must have been, I was talking to her, Mike. I was talking then, to her yeah, about, yeah, she, when I told her about that, she was like, oh, my God. She was like, that's where I saw you. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that was the moment where she started to go, like, I'm demoted. You, you're kind of demoted. Like, I was in ethics trouble doing the pier if to better myself. So, like, you that's know. the fix, right? I right. think at Anyways. that time is when she had been removed from exec strata. Yeah, uh, and she, she was. was yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in exec strata, did she also like serve like Mitch and all these people when they came into town, make sure their rooms and everything like, was that? So was after, that a whole different after job? she left it, yeah, after she left exec strata, she was then moved down into gold. And then when she was in gold, she was uh, put in charge of the G's with, as the housekeeper for the G's. And that's when she started taking care of Mitch and Danny Sherman, and uh, it was after she left Exec Strata okay. for about four years. So that's between probably eighty. So she um, didn't get RPF. Sorry about. She didn't get no, RPF she, after right it, away. No, so they uh, they waited until Ronnie Miscavige and Biddy had left, and then later they were getting rid of a bunch of people, and they sent her to the RPF because the abuse she went through with Ronnie. Oh man, that it's bullshit. Okay. Anyway, yeah. yeah, we're gonna. Get All right, there. back to photos. What do you have? <sighs> okay, so. Um... Which one do you want me to show, Mike? It's up to you. Uh, what do you got? Uh, how about, so do you have maybe one of the ones? Do you want that, to see uh, the German Shepherd one? So you can explain those cute doggies? Sure. I, no. I know one Are of them's name it? is Tasha. <laughs> no, one of them's name. Uh, so some of the younger looking photos of me, um, you can tell. So the, the ones where I look chunkier than I did in those last two photos. How about I don't that? know what that means, Mike. That's your own insecurity. <laughs> Okay, like you well, look honestly you know what you look amazing and beautiful and you always have well, like you. and that's what's so, so suck is is even in the times when you were sweet like i know you had to be harsh but i do also like as i was remembering everything i was like wait i do also remember times when when we did do like perfect marching drills like i know that was our excitement but like you did you were happy and you're like see guys i knew you could do it like you did validate us so there was this weird fucked up like connection of like understanding and like i knew you could i knew you guys could do this under pressure now keep the keep it this way when i leave you know anyways yeah. whatever okay what's so crazy about these photos is they're all at the same angle looking up towards the schoolhouse now that you were looking at <laughs> which is so why is wait which is like there's creepy psychological things like there were certain angles you weren't allowed to show um, like, oh, so, you know, the Saboba Casino is right over these hills or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, whatever, uh, Idlewilds right here on this. So we, we were literally in a canyon anyway. So, yeah, yeah back, we're in this. We're in this look little at these canyon mountains. Area, but, yeah. So <laughs> look at these over those mountains. mountains, the next the next uh, location over those mountains is, is like Palm Springs, Palm Springs. Is like 40 yep. miles away. Right. It's so literally we like. Very, wow. Area. Yeah, and me and Sarah Leobard one time, by the way, hiked all the way up and went to the top thinking we were going to, I don't know what the fuck we were Get doing. away. And That's we looked down and we go. saw the whole, <laughs> yep, we were like, okay. You see the whole got, world and you're we like, have we have to go back. Up. Yeah, we have to go yeah. back and and try this on another day. So these two Germans, I'm pretty sure that uh, the one on the left was Brewster. And yeah, then the one wow, on the right is Tasha. Yeah, Tasha, Tasha was Matt Brewster. Price's dog for a while, and then I don't and know who. Can kind I of took ask over. something? Did Tasha run mm -hmm. into clear windows a lot, like um, sliding glass doors and stuff? I, I know there maybe was some... she started getting older. She was an older German, oh. and um, like yeah. you know, Brewster was younger and he was very energetic. But she, I think, she started kind of aging out a little bit and probably had bad eyesight at some point. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Anyways, this is crazy that Mike. I've shown earlier videos in my episodes, guys. If you're watching, go back to my other episodes where I'm like talking about the photos and videos of the ranch. Mm -hmm. This is how bare and gross the ranch was. 
when so that's how we it got looked there. when we got there. That's the and dump, you see the right? buildings. Yeah, that's the dump yes. over here in the back. Um, no, we need well, to that empty is, that that's dump. That's one of the retention basins. The dump is actually a little bit more to the left. It's off camera. Um, what do you but mean? you can see no. like there's an old. Well, there was a dump up no. there. That's right. No, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. a huge dump right here, Mike. They're behind these trees, but there's a huge dump that they created. It was a big hole. Look, you can see the road that goes up right here. You can see the road that goes up here and it. then right. Oops, sorry. And then right here is this whole thing is a huge jump. That was a big hole. I swear to God, if we dig that shit up. Wow, I just exited the photo. But if we dig that shit up, you could find evidence of really ridiculous shit there. Yeah, or more tags shredding like everything asbestos from the uh oh roofs everything we took off yeah, yeah yeah let's remove yeah oh my god uh okay sorry mike i didn't mean to remove that photo but i can oh that's fine pull up, up another one okay oh let's pull up another one okay because um, we might have a different view of something and not just yeah, my city <laughs> building <laughs> like it's all of the school might house. not just be the school house well here's that motorcycle photo i wanted to show you and you know why i also want to show this is be oops almost almost ended our stream um i want to show this because i remember like josh gilbert and josh gillian later on being the mm -hmm. people that were really obsessed with motorcycles and like all of that like you yeah. could probably bribe josh gilbert to do anything as long as you gave him some time with his motorcycle yeah he loved his bike absolutely so you um, knew so josh I ended gilbert up... and josh gillian i mean sorry josh gilbert that's another one josh and gilbert, gilbert and jesse gilbert and then so at yeah. gold they both ended up working for we all worked together josh I went, after i because i was in him at a certain point after i got kicked out of the rtc trainee pool i was then in charge of plastics in him making the e-meters for a while and then jesse can you wait can um, you really quickly want 30 seconds explain what that means making the plastic for the e-meters that yes, also the later enclosures. the cadets mm -hmm. were building yeah and we would have the cadets come in and help when we had the all the e-meter of... sorry the e-meter is the thing you have to use to to be in scientology to go free to, to do become auditing. spiritually yeah, free it's their yeah you have to be and Mike Brown is just saying that he was, you were what? Making the framework of it or something? So there was, uh, I would do the plastic enclosures for this. This is when I was probably in my, um, I don't know, I was maybe 20, 25 years old. I was making the the plastic stuff for it. I was doing the manufacturing of it. Um, but uh, going back to this picture, this is us at the ranch. It's actually a similar photo, like location. This is kind of up on one of these. <laughs> This is the dump, Mike. Yeah, and then you can see all the rare. No, this is the gully. Us. This is like the gully or something. Anyways, here I'm gonna zoom in. Sorry. Yeah. Yamaha, um, good. Do you like Yamaha? Well, what are these? The, are you wearing some Jordans right now? Probably. Yeah. And some. Where did you, know, you get like those? Boy. From Rosemary. Well, this is, yeah, the stuff I bought. This is the clothes <laughs> that we had when we got to the ranch, and then, then I probably had some Bugle Boy pants. You can see I had the, nice, the cups yeah. done up right. Yeah, uh -huh. and I, plenty of they pleats. like sub. Yeah, right there. I was a we chunky don't... kid, so I needed, and I'm wearing a Dianetic shirt too. If you can oh, kind of see the fuck. bottom edge yeah, of that, yeah, you can see it right uh, there. Uh, the, the, yeah, probably the racing, Dianetics yep. racing team. I've shown um, on earlier streams, like me and as a four year old having like a we come. But that's back, when that bike York was York brand shirt. new. Uh, look that at bike that and brand, look at that new. fucking back tire what the hell so this what is the standard bike that everyone are, would were ride you so but obviously you're TV. taking a photo but you a have a helmet on in the middle of the desert so you were mm. allowed to do this properly right because you had a helmet um, so this, when when sorry. we did ride we had to wear a helmet uh, i don't think i always wear the all the pads and stuff i think that was just me getting my poser on um so <laughs> by your no offense but by your mother or whoever's took this photo yeah. right because when, did, yeah. when we came to the ranch my mom is obsessed with photography and wow look at her in editing you know but yeah. she's so obsessed with photography that like even for gifts and presents cob will give dave miscavige will gift her like things like uh, the most amazing camera that she could only shoot <laughs> Hurt that you know, like she's not going anywhere to shoot any of. The, anyways, whatever. <laughs> but but they know that she likes these things and stuff, so he will purposely give her these gifts. But every time she come to the ranch and take photos of us, the literally the only photos I've been talking about this in my early episodes, the photos that I have are all like stage photos that my mom took, and they're the only fucking like it's horrible. Yeah, well, the 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 
the day to day stuff, we never really were able to keep photos of that. But the only reason but the why fact I had that this you bike... were on a motorcycle is like that's privilege. I mean, in it our is. world, so, like I would have been watching you. No like, Whoa, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? Yeah, I would have been watching so my... you during our free time. <laughs> so my parents were divorced and my father uh, was paying my mother uh, child support payments and that money had kind of accumulated and it was the money for me. So she was like, well, let's buy you a motorcycle. This is what all the executives at Golden Air Productions would ride these same. This yeah. is the exact model of bike that Mark Headley escaped Golden Air Productions on. Is it uh, a Yamaha TW Trailways 200cc motorcycle with that ridiculously big ass tire on the back? Um, his was just a slightly different color. His was a white and blue when this was a blue and black. Um Anyway, yeah, I kind of remember so, like mine's ready. Uh, no, I remember this. Yeah, so way. I had this for a while. And then when I was in trouble, like when I wanted to leave, I still had that bike and a security used it in order to drive the security guard back and forth from the base. Kenny Campbellman, who would open all the, oh. the letters for everybody. He Wait, would drive Mike, my bike. Back I and have forth. traumatic. Yeah. I, I have won't bring traumatic. up his name. I don't want to talk about him. I can't stand the guy. <laughs> Wait, so where is he? Is he still in the Sea Org? Do you know? He must be like, he must be right. There's like no the way furniture. we would have fucking yeah. figured it out. Yeah, dude, that dog, that dude tortured. It's kind of weird and creepy. Uh, uh, I don't know about that fucking weird mustache. Like who the fuck has a weird fucking anyway? Sorry. Okay. So, uh, do you have the photo that sh yeah. of uh, Rosemary and I? It's yes. like when we're up, I think we're in the motels by one of the door uh, rooms. It had those weird flags on the doors. Uh, let's see. I wonder. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Wait, you know what? I was like, I almost didn't upload this photo because I was like, I, I, we don't need to see that. It, they must have been having fun somewhere. And then I was like, no, I want us. I want people to see Rosemary and you as a, like your like connection. as yeah, a so young this is child. anyways. OK, right. So this is when this. she would have been coming out. She was uh, she was so, an but now that you, she was sorry. Okay. Now you said you said flags on the dorm i'm like those were the dorms mm -hmm. i thought you those guys were like i don't know why i thought you guys were like in some country like because i thought oh, red shit, white no. and... that was i don't this know this is when thought... she was coming out on a sunday to pick up like uh jenna and unbelievable so what's the red white and blue what's that it's one of those oh, sorry flags. i'm looking like, at the photo flag. without sharing it i'm so rude wow mike you should have been like You're i don't know keeping Laura, it all to yourself I you're I like know. i can't Put see it, up it so i can tell you yeah. <laughs> you're like so i this, remember it <laughs> this picture okay. of my mom this is she in this picture is probably about the age that i am now um wow. she's in her mid 40s i mean she looks beautiful she's and beautiful uh, this is and i'm this like, little wow. shit kid um, no you're beautiful mike shut your butt so yeah, you look this like is, a cute. You, can you see know what? She's wearing... You do look like a sweet, cute. Uh, but you do look like thicker, which is very sweet. As a kid, that means like you're kind of just was like, like humble and sweet. I was probably the kid in the Goonies film that they were teasing <laughs> in order before they let him in. Um, but you can see she's wearing uh, the whites uniform, and she has yes, that name tag on. And if you could that. see it, yeah, right that here. is uh, you can, her. Is uh, probably yeah. Uh, this is when she would be like coming up and. Uh, picking up uh, Jenna and Justin and stuff for us to go and see our, you know, like CSP time on Sundays when we would go over to the Devonshire in order to wow. see uh, from the, the ranch. So were these, wait, so you're saying Mike, these flags right here were the, were at the Ant ranch. Mm -hmm. Those are, wow. so, those, so they took those, those on, off. Because you, you, I don't know where this, I don't know I where this was. I think they were trying to keep was. the whole ship, you know, right. Because the initial, Apollo, blah, blah, blah. The initial, uh, like design had a lot of because this is like a that's supposed to be one of those like pennant flags where it's thicker on one side and thinner on the other totally. and it's signaling something. Yeah, and but you can remember, see that same motif. remember our bars when you get promoted and stuff were also like this. Like they all represented mm -hmm. something. Like that's yeah. why I was like, maybe we don't know. Obviously, but and anyways. I'm trying to remember which which uh building this is. I think it's somewhere in the motel the motels. units, but you can Yo, see that for same sure. That looks like the lounge. Job. This is a lounge. Mm -hmm. This looks like the lounge. Oh, you know what? This also looks like it could be the um the main building, the big house. Sorry, the big, the big house. house. That's what we called it because they had these long windows right here. Yeah, but these we didn't. We weren't windows. done with the renovations That's on the big true. house yet. That's true. Yeah. So I think right. that that might have been later. Anyway, I can't place exactly where it is, but it's that same oh my God. burnt or or Rosemary. that burnt red color. 
Yeah. Rosemary, if you are watching, I'm sure you are. We freaking love you. My little <laughs> heart loves you so much. I want to say that Rosemary sent me packages and I knew even when I was, even if I was on the pier, if, in a stance where I felt like I was actually more ethical or in a good standing, you know, because she was obviously in trouble. So she was in the galley and I was like, oh, look at me and an ethics a uh, good eth somehow ethical child getting her ethics in uh Pulling being able to nice do in. right being able to do the peer of that gold you know well and then um, somebody's giving you some attention for a change for sure and she'd be like how are you doing she would just be yeah. so sweet like and i'd be like I, like the question would just be like oh yeah i don't know and i think she kind of would be like she asked oh my god she would just like even now that i'm thinking about it oh my god she asked me like what's up with your shoes why don't you have some new shoes oh we should get you some oh a pack of t-shirts isn't that much it's the you know the the white uh hands her way or fruit of the loom we could get you 12 and i <laughs> was just stuff. like why does this person want to see me look good yeah and this nice was person. after me trying to be uh respectable to, like be in good uniform and like even if i came with the white shirt and the khaki shorts it better not have stains and stuff and the stains yeah, yeah. will literally come from nucho the panuccio from the fucking galley from the oil and stuff because never unless i was using like or they would be bleach stains from our uniform anyways hello rosemary uh, um, so yeah that, i love the flavor wow. so I am um, going to be getting short on time because I we have are, to be yes. up as super early, but I know there's probably some questions. Yeah, and chat. So uh, let's go. There. I, we can let's go there, but let's try to go through them rapidly if we can. We are. I'm very good at this, guys. I can fucking okay, do shit. A to B, A to B, A to B. All right, Miranda said I'm excited. Both of you get to share your sides of the trauma you were both put through. Be strong and remember you're free now. P.S. It's my B day. Happy birthday, Miranda. Thank you. <laughs> Very <laughs> sweet. I'm going through all the starred ones. So if you want to donate or do whatever, do it now because I won't see it otherwise. Love y'all. Lara FM, it's been inspiring to see you go in this healing journey and find out more about your own background, right? Yeah. It is. Hello, Megan. It's with an H, Don McKay. Love you guys. You've risen from a horrible situation to a wonderful life and position. You'll help so many others. This is correct. Question from Free Exuda Project. How many people had the code for the phone? What if he was knocked out? Oh, the code well, I at think the ranch. Like, I, all the adults had it. And I know that there was probably, it was probably written. So it's, this is like... It, only the super... adults had it. Yeah, only right. the adults had it. That but I, it. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody wrote it somewhere down because they couldn't totally. remember it. It's <laughs> one of these things of like, hey, I'm going to put the password, like I'm going to put a sticky note for my password on my computer. It was yeah. probably something like that at some point too. And it's like, I don't think the kids will notice it. And I'm like, I think they're smarter than you think they are. Yeah, but, um, like anyway. <laughs> they will definitely. And they will also see where your finger goes. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Dun, 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 just dun. just oh, because mom, we weren't educated through. doesn't. Hi, mom. Just because yeah, we're not educated doesn't you. mean we're not smart. Right. Wow. Yeah. How many times have I been told that after of thinking I was? Uh, no, I'm not smart. But they're like, you're very smart. I'm like, I am. <laughs> very fun. Okay. Um, did I already read this? Laura of is, yep. I'm going to undo Oh yeah, hugs to hugs to both Mike and Lara. The courage to go through this healing journey is remarkable. The honesty and the vulnerability is shown. Yep. Thanks, Grace and Faith. Kelly H. Healing is not pretty. Consider a wound in the stages it goes through until there is finally a healed and faded scar. I love that they are having this conversation. They are helping others too. That's why I Thank started you. this. Yeah. Mike, I'm so glad we had this conversation. I am too. Oh, no, no. I'm so happy to see this combo happening. This is healing me in real time. For those of you who were never in and never trapped, there you have no idea how huge this is. I bow down to both of them. Oh, thank you, oh, oh Nora. Nice. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, Nora. <laughs> Aw. Ann Walsh, I think, is our secret admirer. It's not Laura's loud voice. It's little Megan's yell on. There you go. Yeah. That's what I see. And Mike, if you see any questions or something, you can answer while I'm doing this. You don't. Oh, so I'm, much respect I haven't even Mike. looked. Yeah. Okay, good. Go ahead. Yeah. 
he cares so much for people and wants to make their lives better. Yes. Thanks for saying that. I mean, this hasn't been an easy conversation, but I think it was important that we had it and I'm glad that we did. Um, but I appreciate uh, them saying that. I appreciate yeah. it a lot. I do too. And I also love that we know that we can have a, a more even detailed conversation because we already understand like the outskirts of, of, of like, yeah the crazy shit but like i would love well, to talk about like like aaron woodruff um put me on a pab six program and that pab six program was like tr gotten from when you guys came and were like oh well if somebody's being psychotic then we're gonna treat him like a psychotic person like just like a child yeah. or a cadet Sucks. anyway so yeah and like i fell down from a cliff from like anyways crazy and she had to like carry i was like i'm surprised i didn't die there was a huge boulder like coming down on me in the middle of the creek and i fell from a cliff so crazy okay sorry uh blue for good successfully after becoming homeless 12 years ago becca's good wow awesome uh Scientology did this. They're doing it still to yet another generation. I believe some still in cult of Scientology is watching this conversation and will now find the cover courage to leave. Love to you, Lara and Mike. Thank, Thank you, you, darling. Kelly R. H. Uh, we got we got to get this little this little biatch up here right here. Growing up in Scientology. Hey, hey, Ron. Hey, it's so cool to see you doing this chat. Thank you, hey, hey, Ron. Thanks, Aaron. So good to see your little cutie pie face. Maybe we'll see you at the protest, guys. If you guys are watching and listening, we're doing a... First of all, I have a cute show tomorrow at the Art Share Los Angeles downtown. Uh, and I'm doing like uh, four or five songs. The song I played at the very beginning... Anyways, I'll be singing all those at the thing. But it's, uh, I think I go on at like 7.30 or something, whatever. Just come show up. There's a bunch of artists there. I used to live there. And I this is where I like deprogram myself. to the, like, Nice. And crazy, but also weird because, oh, also, also weird because the way I got into the art chair was through Scientology. <laughs> like people, nice. friends that I, yeah, I was couch surfing and doing all crazy uh, Ann Walsh, great interview, Lara. You have a unique story and perspective. I hope you continue to yell about it. Yaha, hello. Thank you, darling. Ann Walsh, you cutie patootie with a booty. Lara, Lara it. When you showed your mom the spanking marks so she would help you and came back with the LRH policy, my mom let me down when I needed protection to be loud. I love you. That's very sweet. Thank you, darling. Yes, when that like can you imagine mike like they come to you and they're like thinking like no dad and they're doing this at school and la, la, la. and then you go and then you do this you're like what so my mom was like super pissed she was like she i saw her eyes dwelling up she couldn't believe the bruises on my butt and yeah. that there were even red ones that just happened like she was just like what the fuck are they doing abusing a body when we're talking about scientology and auditing like she was just like this isn't this isn't physical why is this being physical right but then fell and, into line with the policy and then so when she left my dorm room eight you know or room yeah. 10 when she left i thought in my child mind so imagine your kids right they're thinking Okay, oh my god, I finally got it off. I know I probably interpolated my mom, but at least she knows now and they can stop doing that and they can handle me a different way. Yeah. And then she comes back with this policy letter. So it's god. like you're trapped in a shit situation at that point. Yeah, that's why she's like, be loud, I love you, yeah. No, yeah. it's not even a trap, it's just like you're, I'm, I was on my own. I, my mom is in a different department right. of love and she doesn't cover this. I'm That's sorry, that sucks. Like. Yeah. If it isn't any consolation to you, Lara, I understand the documentary is showing awful things. I didn't know it was sanitized, but I understand it was terrible. Yeah. Well, it's just terrible because I think the person, the director and everybody who went into it wanted to tell the whole story and everything. And then they got corrupted and scared and, you know, manipulated. I think that's actually what happened. And whatever way that was, that's what happened. And so... And if not, then then thumbs down on the director. That's all I got to say. 
uh, Sieglin, thank you so much. Thanks for having the balls to do this interview, Mike. And thank you, Laura, for having the guts to bring it about. Yeah, yeah. Mike did that. Thank you. Uh, may any Scientologist watching learn a lesson from this actual communication, literally. Like Scientology says the universal solvent is communication. Yeah, but they can't. <sighs> That's what so I they told aren't. My dad. They don't open themselves up to crit criticism. They can't have the, a nuanced, detailed discussion. Have an argument with somebody. Sit down. Go over something hard. It just is. It has to be this like little prescribed thing, or else they 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 fall apart. It yeah. sucks. Anyway. No, it totally, absolutely is that. And if not, oh, yeah, um, cranky scientist. I like that name. Speaking as an adult and mother of five, why would they have a nineteen-year-old's specify what parenting should look like that's just wrong yeah totally wrong mm -hmm. Whitney said it best I believe that children are our future teach them well and let them lead the way show them all the beauty they possess inside oh Sandy Yerkin's powers this is the angel baby who made all this goldenrod magic happen that's Lord, a lot please. of work it's pretty she amazing yeah, Mike, she literally, like, this shit is crazy. Uh, she said, Laura, please know the, that the vest giving you a huge hug right now. Healing, thank you, Miss Sandy Powers. Healing will come from this, I know. You are right, it already is. Uh, Gemma Marie says, Laura, I, as I watch you speak your, your history, I see you today and I see your child who only needs to be loved. Thank you, sweet angel babies. Duchess Diana, you are both strong and courageous. We support your efforts and hope to bring this to light to end the children's rights uh, violation. Yeah. I think that's why you're also doing it, Mike. Yeah. I am. And elder abuse, which that's my thing any... is literally child abuse and elder abuse and yeah. but that is so, the the um uh what the tool for scientology to use to and then they use it to excommunicate people if you try to leave like they'll disconnection right. and all that weaponize your family against you Oops. yeah sorry accidentally did that okay um you little cutie pie SB Cracker Liquor fan. Wow. You need to calm your little cutie pie face down. Love and healing to you both. Thank you for your strength and resilience for reaching out to one another. Right, Mike? We need to thank awesome. each other for that, right? No, I'm I'm glad you agreed to talk. I'm glad that we, we got to a place where I At think first we were I didn't, able you know to that. do this. No, I know. Yeah. Um, But I think that we then were able to text a little bit um and then, and then you didn't know this but i was watching your videos and then with rosemary and stuff and then um it showed me that i'm not talking to the mike brown that like i was like i'm not fucking interested in talking to somebody yeah. who needs to be shown like what they did wrong if you're here and you understand it then that is only going to heal us then there may be no other discussion other than that like so well, I'm yeah, really I think glad you did. We that. had the discussion. And like I said in my analogy about Claire, I thought Claire when I was there was terrifying to me. Right. And when I look at her out here, I'm like, why did I think that? Well, that's just <laughs> because she was, that was the role she was playing. Right. Yes. We were all playing these weird roles and they were they uh we were trained to become abusive in nature to one another and the the whole like um societal relationship with everyone in the Sea Org is based off of, you know, fear and punishment if you don't do things. And it's not off of fostering a good working environment. I can tell you that. Yeah. For adults, let alone kids. So like fill in the blanks with how bad and, that shit. And then get. it's not just like, oh, just like a few hours here and there and it's rough. It's literally every step you're taking. It's like, where are you going on your 15 minute break? Are you going to the canteen? Are you going to the swings? Are you in the playground? Okay, come back into studies. Are you, what, what course are you doing? Are you like, it's insane. Mm -hmm. Like every step you're taking and breathing is this. It is right. like, we're grooming you to think that this is the planet. This yeah. is how the planet works and you're in a safe bubble very indoctrinated yeah oh yeah. yeah. cute last ones thank you by the way sp cracker liquor fan <laughs> uh so now i get the lara part 
but can you fill us in on the FM? I have been thinking FM radio because of your music talent. Yes, Siegel, Sieglin, 100%. I, at the Ant Ranch, where I consider my whole childhood, we were not allowed to listen to the radio or CDs or anything, let alone have a radio to play. We'd be using Becky Hughes's shit or somebody who was lucky enough to have a radio from their executive parents that were once millionaires or something before they joined the Sea Org. And, uh, and we would, if we were up stat and we had our production in line, then they allowed us to listen to the radio. So yeah, also FM. So FM was the radio because I was in California, obviously in the Hemet. So I also remember this line they'd always say on the radio, like in commercials or something like, um, Buena, buena, noche buena, Baja California, Mexico. Like, I just remember that from a radio mm -hmm. station, like, and so there was like all these that anyway, so FM was the only channel I was allowed to hear if we were allowed to listen to music. So that covers that. But also FM, like fuck them, FM <laughs> is very much what I also love. So there's a little play on words I, I'm picking uh, up. Very, there, right? very much. And and the middle finger eventually turns into a, an antenna, at a radio antenna. Tune in with love. So yeah, fuck them all, FM, and listen and tune in to the LAR FM channel. <laughs> Thank you for asking great questions. All right, Mike, how do you feel about this whole chat? I'm glad we did it. I feel tired, but um, I feel tired too. Well I, well, I think we've also been up. Like I'm, I'm on the East Coast, and it's getting late. And I have an early yeah. morning, but I'm. Yeah. I think it was good. We took the time. So, um, I definitely owe my wife a thank you taking care of everything while I'm uh, up here and getting my chat me on. She's too, like yeah. wrangling children. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, someday I'll be able to meet all you, your wife, your children, and everybody, and I will be the the best distractor. What's great is my kids are so much better than I am, and that Aww. I think is what I want. You know what I mean? Like I just. Um, anyway, I love being a dad. It's, it's, uh, it's helped me a lot. They've, I've healed so much from that experience. I know they're not here for me. I'm here for them. But, um, I think being a father helped me actually work through a lot of shit in my own mind, because obviously I just compartmentalized it, but it's made me drag it out. And luckily I've been with a person that's helped me kind of figure out the proper way to navigate this whole thing because, um, they don't come with instruction manuals any more than <laughs> no. people do. You and, know, they so purpose, we, and if they did, they take them away from you so that you just go out empty handed. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. don't want you to know how to do good. No, they but this was good. I'm glad we like, did it. Yeah, no, I'm very glad we did. And we should do a round two and, um, yeah, let's schedule it. Just talk about all the. Let's schedule it for when I don't have to get up before the sun comes up. How about that? So in the middle of the <laughs> night, that's great. I'm down. I'm awake. <laughs> okay, awesome. so Mike, I really appreciate. It. And for those, Mike has already apologized. He called you called me up privately, and before I was going off to my whole adventure of seeing Metallica and all these amazing bands, uh, it was kind of such a sweet, appropriate phone call for you to be calling me while I was like on the road and like going to actually relax, and then hearing just here and and just. Um, without even speaking about even these t details that we spoke tonight about, it was really mm -hmm. nice to even hear that on the phone just through your voice and through your intentions. That's what made me go, this guy's not trying to manipulate me in any way. We're just trying to talk about this. And also, obviously, there was a huge side I had no idea about. And like, it's well, I need extremely to talk about crazy. It, too. it was extremely crazy that... Um, Steve Willett and you had the connection with Sarah Willett then being the enforcer late at the exact same time for the gun. So it was just like, oh, that's so interesting how it all comes around full circle. Like, yeah, even the and things I don't see, I'm like, oh, my God, that answered even that. Like, that I think wild. we find ourselves forced into roles that we we didn't sign up for, but then we're we didn't have a choice about in many in many and then uh, we were respects. trying to be like good but at, at the it. same like, time you gotta nice. yeah but you have to own it a little bit too which is what i'm trying right. to do I'm, I'm reflecting back i'm like you know what i wouldn't want to be in that situation i wouldn't want my children in that situation so i need to talk about my involvement and stuff that i'm not proud of so that's yeah. that i think i think we've started to do that tonight and i feel good where i think I feel good. I we're, we're probably yeah. going to leave off. I think that's yeah. really good. And we'll do this again. And then maybe we can even bring more people on and all that. But I really appreciate you, Mike. And honestly, Rosemary, love you, honey, angel, mother. 
Um, oh, I'm telling you, Rosemary, you give the the fact that Mike and everybody who helped got you out and you're here and and talking to us and just having like that is literally actual reality of hope like seeing Absolutely. and especially since my mother was at gold base and still is uh but where rosemary is and for her to just just the frame of mind of her being in a room separately by herself and you just so casually gave her this like material to look at and then when she did when she just spent the time to watch you know the going clear documentary and and just a few other things that was enough just in the amount of manipulation and 20 years of 45 years of fucking insane cruelty, like insane cruelty, unnecessary stuff. Like, yeah, um, just for the, for the control, fast. right, right, right. How it just melts within five, 10, yeah. 20, an hour, you know, 30 minutes of somebody being on their own that naturally has a very loving sweetheart. So in, in our hope in sharing all this is that, her story of the success and getting her out, even as um, as late in life as she is, there's no reason why that can't happen with other people. Exactly. Bob Ferris, your parents, many other parents, all pretty much everyone, everyone that's on SPTV has somebody there that they either have as direct family or somebody they care about very much. This cannot be the end of it. There's got to be a reconnection phase for everything. And that is what that is what we are dreaming of. So and I that's... think, Mike, you really have put a literally a pathway that shows here's one actual. That's what I mean about real hope is that it's actually mm. happened. This did happen. This person was pawned off to be dead. Your mother was basically like, all right, we don't care if Mike Brown talks to her because she's going to die anyways. Like. But That's they didn't know. Which they had no idea <laughs> because they're so moronic on how to actually care and love for a human body right. because that's a useless thing in Sea Org and Scientology. A body is just good until it's done. Yeah. Anyways, I'm so freaking proud of you guys. And thank you, everybody in the chats. Oh, no, there's a few starred. I told you guys not to do this. You don't send super chats after we're saying goodbye. We love you all. <laughs> Mike, we'll have you. Lar FM, we'll have you on another channel where we can even talk about intimate details of things and fun things. And and also just, uh, again, answering people's questions. Like All right. Well, let's ones. let's end on one thing. I have an idea. Let's try yeah. to think of one fun thing that happened at some okay. point, something that was enjoyable. Okay, um, I enjoyed first. riding my bike. I loved riding my motorcycle. When I came back and had a motorcycle and I saw the look on Justin and Sterling's face when I went to a dentist appointment and came back with a motorcycle and they're like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, I got a motorcycle. That's what it is. That was enjoyable because <laughs> I got one over on somebody. Anyway, no, uh, what that's about you? great. Um, <laughs> shit. I think mine are just silly things like. Um, hmm, what would be. It's silly things. I think like, like, for example, the lawnmower being able to drive the and take two hours. And it didn't matter if I was like 10 minutes late for muster or 10 minutes. I was for some reason I was allowed. I was like, I star rated and did the whole manual. So I knew how to drive that fucking thing. I knew what yeah. everything. Anyways, I felt very superior. Empowered. Yeah, I felt very. I knew how, like, I was like, when I say, when the, when the lawnmower is off and parked back at the shed is when the job is done. So you're able to do automated <laughs> manual labor. You know, it felt like, wow, I don't have to really do this. I don't have to uh, weed whack. I did have to weed whack the edges, but I felt like mm -hmm. I could take, hey, the machine can only go as fast as it can go. There you go. So Good it felt stuff. like slow freedom. Cool. All right, guys, we love you all. We'll be back again soon. Mike, we'll schedule it. Thank you right, so much good. for being here. And um, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Ugh, I appreciate it too. Ciao, guys. Bye. Somebody is searching for the right child. Somebody is telling you what's right. Now you're gone. You're gonna do the next